and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name's David Turner. I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello. Ho ho, Sean Bell in the house. Hi. And James Farley. Hello. Okay, uh, should we get, let's just bash through this one. Let's bash through it. Let's just smash this, this one out of the park. We have we for a dash. Li- I was going to say, we have for two hours, yeah. It'll be under, be under <laughs> two hours. So hello, dash Boom radio. Train. That's what I'm thinking. Right, feedback. They all love it. Did they last week? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, they mostly did. Last week, uh, James uh, regaled us <laughs> with some, did. With some uh, fantastic China knowledge, uh, as he's known to, be, he? known to do. Uh, Alex sent to UK. Genuinely fascinating discussion on this week's uh, computer game show. James brings an insight to China that other podcasts just don't have. Excellent stuff. Uh, Sean <laughs> Thomas. Really lovely insight into China this episode. Learned a whole load of things I found fascinating and will look to bore my colleagues with now. Uh, and a few others said, said the same thing, really. Um, I'll say this. James has played that very, very well, right? And this not I'm not going to take the piss out of James. You played it very well in that you could bang on about China forever, but you've been selective with it. And it is interesting when you go on about it, but could you imagine that every show? I guarantee the people that were like, oh, I'd love a, a podcast no, like this every week. Oh, I guarantee. <laughs> give, it, give it a couple of weeks. No, when, be when a story comes up. Again? Then it's fine, but I'm not. I'm not going to do it regularly because it, it will get irritating for people. Uh, f- f- plus, that. plus right. to be fair, James does actually get paid to talk about China, so why would he give it away for free on it? <laughs> also true. <Yeah. laughs> well, what James I did find interesting with all the China um, feedback is that people are like, oh yeah, you know, uh, someone else said, how uh, Luke Summerhay said uh, James's China chat on the computer game show is always super interesting. I'm always at the point where I'll trade the dream Star Trek podcast with Sean. <laughs> For a James Farley Asia show. <laughs> Is it like, really a dream? I, I mean, I'd better, rather do the Trek dreams. podcast, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Up to Let's season five Trek. now, Sean. Next generation nice. of the rewatch, yeah. Save yeah. it for the pod. In, into the actually good bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That definitely save that for the pod. Definitely mm. save it for your podcast. But, but, okay. but, what I find interesting, people, other people are saying, you know, do you, you talk more about China. Like, we talked about China loads on Interface. But, we did, yeah. We did like, talk about it quite and, a bit. And people yeah, no one that listened. show off. <laughs> <laughs> so why that? Don't give us all this now. We tried. Yeah, we yeah, tried. We had about city eight on that pod. It's great. And then <laughs> now China look. City. You killed it. Right. SMW, uh, please stream the Rocket League tutorial sessions. Now, why didn't you say Chinatown? <laughs> why did you go with China City? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> after last week, all my best gags were missed. I thought, I, I can't be bothered this week. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah, so, so last well, week, you mentioned that uh, Dave, well, yeah, Dave and James, you know, go play Rocket League together to to teach uh, James uh, the ways of Rocket League. And SNW wants, us, well, wants you guys to stream the tutorial sessions. We will do. That we will great. do. But not right now. I mean, wait until the Rocket League pass has gone because, I mean, we'll get onto it. But there's no way I... A, and spending time with James on Rocket League while that Rocket Pass was going, B, just completely destroying but, my but, stats but, but on, but on my main that, account. That pass will be on permanently, like Fortnite, surely. What do you mean? Well, no, once, when this one runs out, there'll be a new season and another pass to buy. Well, there goes that stream idea then. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry, James. It's all right, it's fine. Cool. I'm not 100% sure I'm doing it again next time, but we'll get to, we'll get to that. Let's not jump ahead. Let's not jump ahead just yet. Right, next. Um, uh, great. Ep- uh, this is Mark Jeffries. Great episode uh, last week. Neither that was I'm made up with cold. Uh, I'm feeling Mark. sorry for myself. But can James please stop saying ten cent own epic and blue hole? It's a mis- It's a bit misleading. Okay. As Whoa. I replied, shots to him, fired. Let's let's just clarify. They own forty percent of uh, <laughs> of Epic, and uh, I think they own shares in Blue Hole. So yeah, okay. there you go. Apologies. Right, can you stop replying to people's tweets though? Can well, you save it's it for the show? Irritating, isn't <laughs> he it? He does it so much. I've I have said to you privately a few times. Just don't. Just hold it off. I can't and then we'll it. address it's it on the show. Irritating, isn't it? It's just yeah. But other people I, I, you that can aren't tell, on Twitter tell. or haven't seen that interaction don't want to hear. As I said to him, you know, <laughs> they, they want to hear your live reaction. Yeah, so just save that shit. I mean, I went a week of being called every name under the sun without responding. If I could do that, you could do this. All right. All right. Is that a deal? All right, all right. fine, whatever. Nice one. Cheers, cheers, I, mate. I, I, Come I, on, I, you I, can I, do I, it. James, that tweet was in, was incredibly short. It was very like, oh, I'll be sure to clarify the forty percent thing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that, that's that's definitely love, the tone I, love I got from that tweet. I, I love James, but the tone of his tweets is just insane. <laughs> Thanks, mate. So, you, know. you do sound like the the biggest, like proper. Oh, I can't be 
bothered. <laughs> it's because it's just all that nitpicky stuff. It always winds me up. I mean, yeah, it's just, it irritates me. Uh, well, we just wait. In a few weeks, you'll be getting a lot of t- tweets about FIFA. Yeah, I'm sure. And you know you I are. I can't like, wait. I absolutely cannot wait. I mean, even now, you must get, what, one a week at least? Not one a week. I mean, one Usually about at least one a fortnight. I get, you know, like related <laughs> Listeners, to it. bombard him. Whenever you see a deal, <laughs> bombard him. It's not just that, it's anything to his sales figures. that You always get the, oh, oh that's James buying all the copies. <laughs> brilliant, like, it's just... brilliant, keep doing it. I find every one of those funny. Go on. <laughs> uh, Thomas at Lamafly42. Um, interesting that James says he's done if Detroit features on the Game of the Year show. He's walked into yet another trap. Even if Matt comes to his senses and doesn't pick Detroit, guess what the TCGS listener choice will be? A landslide for Detroit, just to annoy him. So I, I, is, did I miss this? Because I thought James was saying he was done if it wins the Game of the Year show. No, he said it fits in. Yeah, okay. I, I said I'm show. done if Matt... Like, I mean, it would just... I, I just lose... Any respect I got from that would be just gone if he yeah, but chooses that. No, he's going to do it just to, just to, because it'd be funny, and it would be funny to be fair. Do you so, know what's, do you know what's <laughs> fucked up, right? Do you know what's really fucked up mm. that your brain works like that? If Matt <laughs> puts forward a game that he likes that I don't, then I am no, both lost I've got respect no problem for him. with that. No, you trust what I've the got process, a problem with, James. No, what I've got a problem with is it's <laughs> no. not the fact that. It's a game that he, you know, he says he likes or whatever. It's a game that he says he likes and then also said was terrible. It's like, how, <laughs> how does that no, work? It's like a game in the year show. I didn't say that. I said I had some issues. But I, oh, we've been issues, over man. this. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't <laughs> no, we have. Something. We have. We've discussed this for a little bit, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but Matt, just Matt, go- Matt, you know what to do. <laughs> you know <laughs> what to do. Of course I know what to do, but can we afford to lose <laughs> James? Yes. I think we can. Yeah, I think you definitely can. <laughs> Matt, yes, don't because tweet- no, then it'll just be me and you in the new year. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2019 uh, tea suggestion would be very, very different. Uh, who would be your first call? Uh, if it was just you two, who would be your first call? What, what do you mean? What, who, who we'd get to- in? Yeah, 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 your first phone call. Quick, we need at least one more. <laughs> who do you call? Well, d- as- as Sean's got the contacts. Yeah, but I mean Matt's that's putting a lot Drake. of pressure on me because I, mean, <laughs> I know Andy'd be up for it, but he's he's horrible. Sorry, Andy. Um, I mean Denton's got previous, so we know he can he can do it. Um, yeah, but he ain't gonna. But he's not gonna because he's fucking busy. So yeah, I mean uh, yeah, we're fucked. Oh great! I'd listen to that. I'd listen to that. For, well, the first five minutes of every show, the rest of it, I'll just switch off. But sorry, right, just, do, just do what you're going to do before audition for my replacement. That'll be that'll be fine. But I imagine if it was just you two, I'd be screaming on Twitter, this baby, right? I've just found something better than white noise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorts of baby right sleep sleep. second. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle that shit and put it in an app. <laughs> yeah, but then we'd make a fortune. <laughs> no, I'd make a fortune. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, and Futo exercise on Twitter. Is James looking for an out? First, he's saying he'll leave if Detroit was in the Game of the Year show, and then he fails to mention a Nintendo Direct at all in the news. Yeah, it wasn't a great week for you, was it, James, last week? Did I? I don't remember that. Well, we well, talked yeah, about it, it only because it, it came up in conversation. We did, yeah. but it was rubbish, wasn't it? So It, was it like, wasn't not, rubbish. No, it, it was wasn't right. very. Okay, it wasn't very good, so it wasn't yeah. really worth talking about, so he Look. left it. James gives it all to Biggin, and he acts like he don't want to be here, but this is the highlight of his week. <laughs> he absolutely loves being on this podcast. He loves chatting to me. He's honoured that I've considered him a friend, like absolutely honoured about that. And, and it, it, this is it. I mean, it's all an act. Secretly, he absolutely loves it when you tweet him constant corrections. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do it. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, it's when we, you know, before we're recording, coming on here and you're just singing songs about stuff, and it's just horrible. What was I singing about? <laughs> just about sucking your dick and everything. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was. Yeah, he was hell. enjoying it. He was enjoying it. He said, "Yeah, go on, I will." Oh, what? what? Oh, it's my mic on. I thought it's on mute. All right, go on, go on, man. <laughs> Callum Gunn has emailed in um, about Sony's PSN infrastructure. Uh, right then, here's the thing. Sony's PSN infrastructure is mental. Y- you know you can't even change your PSN name, even though mine is my full fucking name because I was stupid eight or six, year- six or eight years ago. The only plausible reason for that is that they made some poor structural decisions when se- setting up a service that they can't work around. That's the real reason why they're shying away from this cross-platform stuff. The system just cannot support it and the effort to fix it, which would, of course, eclipse 
uh, the work involved in, say, letting a user change their PSN name is too fucked to mention. Obviously, that's not something they're willing to admit publicly, hence the daft PR spin. Uh, anyway, there you are, a sensible no, bit of conjecture I, from I, the mouth I, of a programmer. Not a good <laughs> or clever one, but a programmer nonetheless. Uh, okay. That's from a <laughs> that Scott doesn't make any sense, because... Oh, well, I know, it does, well, it does, does. me. Yeah. No, I know, but if Sony are bad at this stuff, what about Nintendo? And they can manage it, and they can't even cobble yeah, together they're, they're, online. They're, 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 it's, it's about how Sony probably set things up when like PS3 yeah. kicked off. Yeah, yeah, and PSN was shit back yeah. then, to be fair. And that it. That is widely uh, regarded. I mean, I, I don't think Sony have, have obviously ever confirmed it, but th- that's widely regarded as the reason why we haven't been able to change their PSN names because yeah. because of because of <laughs> silly database reasons and mm. maybe they've been working n- on it, you know, for for years and they haven't got it working yet. But also, James, technically, if you're playing Nintendo Online currently, yeah, mm. you can have forty people in a lobby. I don't know which game that no game supports that amount, but you could have a full <laughs> lobby of people called Steve. <laughs> and it, 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 do you know what I mean? It's, so you know, Nintendo are not exactly knocking it out of the park, mate. Exactly, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I doubt this is technical reasons. This is money reasons. Is the only reason that this is going on. What? Sony, it's the only reason they're not interested in crop plus platform play. It's not technical reasons. So they don't want to. I don't mean, want it to... could be both. You could argue that, yeah. like, yeah, if they were on the back foot, it would be worth spending that money to sort the network out. But yeah. It's both a pain I mean, in the that, ass that, and not exactly in their what best saying, interest. I think. So, yeah. You, you, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. James, you're weirding me out with that. Right. Cool. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean he's weirding you out? Well, because he said it's not technical reasons; it's money reasons. So, what's the money aspect? He goes into the, into the tech, right? So it's both. No, yeah. it's the fact that they don't want to share, do they? Like with um, you know, with uh, other. Oh, platforms. oh, right. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Money reasons. <laughs> and that's money- the name of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Already <laughs> nailed it. Go uh, at faulty at vault forty two overseer M J L on Twitter. Hi guys, just wanted to say you couldn't be more right about Mario Odyssey. What a beautiful, charming game. Plus the soundtrack is phenomenal. Only in the only in the only on Sound World, and I feel like I could justify the Switch purchase already. I'm um, just including this because we were we were one of the very very few podcasts to stick our head above the parapet and say it's a, it's a great game. And I, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm we glad did. we stuck up that little game because um, it would have been um, forgotten uh, otherwise. So yeah, I will say this though. <laughs> He's totally right about the soundtrack, right? The soundtrack is incredible in that game. And, you know, um, I listened to the Giant Bomb End of the Year show uh, for Best Soundtrack, and they just fobbed off Super Mario Odyssey so quickly. Mm. I was like, the music in it is too good. Like, what? what is this? See, that's um, probably because they haven't had, like, a five-year-old playing it over and over and over again, and it's like the fact <laughs> that you can listen to it over and over and over again, and it's that actually very still true. good. It's like, yeah. you know, they miss that. Yeah, 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 that's true. I, I can still listen to that music, and that is a that is a miracle, basically, <laughs> because every other... I mean, I do have to listen to Gangnam Style and, uh, um, was it Paradise City, by Guns N' Roses, <laughs> and that, they've lost that? their appeal. Is he still, Sorry? Is he still not off that? Like Are you kidding City? me? It's yes, like no, thing. he's not off that. I was hmm. thinking about Paradise City, actually. While, while this has come up, um, I was thinking, if... Micro- I know it's EA and forget like the predictability of it. If Microsoft could get Paradise City 2 as their like big exclusive, do you think that'd be a big game for them? Do you mean Burnout Paradise? Yeah, yeah Burnout Paradise. <laughs> I mean, a bit like the sequel. Given that Forza Horizon is Fuck. kind of a. I wanted James to answer because I want him to go, yeah, no, that would be quite good. And okay. I go, yeah, well, Falls are fucking counts then. <laughs> I've been playing Falls a lot, mate, and how you can just write that off as a shit exclusive is, is absolutely beyond me. <laughs> no, it's that's beyond the thing. I didn't, me. That's what annoys me. I'm not saying it's a bad game, a bad exclusive, or whatever, but it's no, a you predictable said it doesn't one. Count. Yeah, because it's a predictable one. It's the same one every year. They do one of those. <laughs> All right, okay. So, Last of Us and Uncharted. Well, they yeah. don't do that every year. Exactly. But it's, like, it's just it's the same thing though. every year. It's not every year. It's every other year. There's two. There's motors, motorsport. Okay, there's, and there's motorsport Horizon. and then there's Motors- Horizon. <laughs> Forza Motorsport. Matt, yeah. don't laugh at me. I got this one. I got this. That's right. Grab the, the steering wheel off me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving straight. I was going to say Motorstorm first. No, Motorsport. Oh, I, do you know what, Matt? I, I swear to God, you say that to me all the time. Oh, you said the wrong thing. And I go, no, I fucking didn't. And then when I'm editing, I'm going, I fucking did. <laughs> like, I'd be surprised if I said Motorstorm. Damn, I should have just asked James directly. Sorry, Sean, you weren't to know. Like, right. 
<laughs> that, that's it for, for the feedback. Um, if you want to leave us feedback, it's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter, or you can email the Computer Game Show at gmail dot com. Well, straight into the news then, uh, James. This is Joe, we, this is weird, right? Are you all right, well, David? Because you just seem more hyper than normal. Like, yeah, I played football this. today. Okay. I played football <laughs> after work. So um, this is the. I mean, this is what used to happen all the time, and I haven't played for a while, and I've played again, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm on the I'm on the fucking edge, man. Can you not? Sorry. Can you can you like not do it before you record? Because it's just it's awful. Can you not tell me what to fucking do? Yeah, I can because it's dis- it's disrupting the flow of the show because you're just going crazy. <laughs> oh, this is this is continuing the flow of the show, isn't it, James? This is this is making it nice and smooth, isn't it? Nice transition into the news. Hey, news. Should we play that music Capone sent us? No, no, don't, don't do that. Not- <laughs> 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 Horrifically, uh, right? Okay, James, James, let's do the news. Right, sorry, I'll back off. I'll chill out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Some Switch games won't support cloud saves. And, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. So, apparently, several Switch games, including Splatoon 2, the new Pokemon games that are going to come out, are not going to have it. And also, FIFA 19, Dead Cells, Dark Souls, Remastered, all that, none of those are going to support the cloud save function. Oh, reason? Sake. Have they given a reason? Well, have they announced this, or is this leaked? It's. I think it's announced. Yeah, because it was on the on their uh, their site. You know, with the uh, the asterisk sort of thing of in like. These, but they just whack that in there like, yeah. and hope no one noticed. <laughs> well, they always do that, don't they? Because that's the thing with Nintendo. It's like they always release a serve. Like they have, there's a new service or a new game, and everyone's like, "Oh, wow, well, that's really good." Until all the caveats start coming out <laughs> of like, actually, no, this is terrible for whatever reason. But they've said it's because it's to stop cheating. Because they, it's like what? they said people <sighs> are going to like revert their saves in online games and all that. Despite the fact that in like these games, like the third party games, they all work with like cloud saves on the other platforms, so that yeah. doesn't make any sense. But it's Nintendo, isn't it? You see, this is pisses me off because this is the same mindset that basically kills Splatoon because you know, like Splatoon, you can't um, like you can't just make a lobby and like one or two or three friends join and then you go and face up, face off against people who are who've been put together randomly. Yeah. Nintendo think that's unfair, and it's like. Yeah, it kind of is, but people will take that on the chin to be able to just play with their mates easily. Like, yeah. that's that's fine. <laughs> we'll accept that. Um, and, yeah, it just feels like it's that mindset again. It's like, yeah, all right, yeah, people could fucking mess around with their saves, but who really cares? Who Who is so upset by that? They're like, yeah, I don't want the convenience of being able to do cloud saving on these games. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a sacrifice we must <laughs> make. <laughs> It's just um, yeah, it's a very odd way of looking at it. What is this, two weeks away? Well, we don't know, do we? It's, it's, <laughs> I thought they the announced the date. It was no, supposed date, to be... Right? No, because it was supposed to be the end of September, is what they said. First of all, they said September. Right. Then there was that release saying, oh, actually, the end of September, which really felt like they just figured out that they got to do it, and they're not ready. And then there was supposed to be a direct last week, and the speculation was that they were going to... Like reveal more details about it then, but, but they then announced that that was about upcoming Switch and 3DS games. Yeah, but they always uh, I know, but wasn't there like sort of some other leaks as well of like this because this is where these leaks about like the online save stuff came from was from that, right? And so, but that was delayed because there was that earthquake, and there's still now no detail about when when it's going to happen. So yeah, we're not oh, Jesus Christ, I'm not sure. What are they planning? Out? Okay, but yeah, so the online stuff is still a mystery, and uh, but yeah, whatever it is, it'll be not very good. Um, we, well, you know, you know, it's going to be optimistic. James, there yeah. for a change. Yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic about Nintendo's online services. Um, <laughs> so Switch sales have topped uh, five million in Japan, yeah. and which is quite a big deal because it's it's really it's not that far now behind the PS4. It's mm. only like it's the PS4 is like two million ahead of it, and uh, yeah, which is quite a big deal because the PS4 has been out for quite a long time. And the best-selling games are Splatoon 2 at number one, uh, followed by Mario Odyssey and Mar- Mario Kart 8. And, yeah, our game of the year was only in at fourth. Uh, yeah, we're just over that a million. Is, that Ow. is insane. Well, the Breath of the Wild's only fourth. It's weird, but apparently, like, Zelda games always sell better in the West than they do in Japan for really? some reason. Really? Did not know and that. Okay. Splatoon is, is massive there, it seems. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, because I was looking at the sales charts tonight, like, the Xbox One, have you seen the sales numbers for that? No. It's, what in Japan? Yeah, in Japan, yeah. yeah but they've never, they've never, like historically, they yeah. didn't go for the three hundred and sixty. Yeah. So they weren't well, going for that. They, they did because for... they they went a bit more for the three hundred and sixty than the original one. But the Xbox One, it's like worse than the original Xbox was. It's like shit, virtually nothing. Yeah, it's, it's I, honestly, I find that that's not surprising at all. Yeah, um, 
They've never liked that shit. But I mean, because I was having a look, and it's globally the Switch is still. It's currently now around half the number of Xbox One consoles, like globally. But it's gaining really quickly. And but the PS4 is still massively ahead with like eighty-one million. It's um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's quite a big big deal. But so uh, also, I mean, the other thing that must be quite pleasing for them is that you know, like Dead Souls, that that outsold the PS4 version like on Switch by four to one, which is quite a wow. big thing. Yeah, and a. Apparently, MPD reckons that the Switch is going to outsell the PS4 this year in in terms of like you know units. I mean, that would be just in America, but it already yeah. has been like for a couple of months. There's been it's been doing better than the PS4, so wow. it's kind of it's doing really well, which is um which is good, I guess. It is, yeah, and, and and partly that is due to people already starting about talking about the new generation and all that sort of stuff. Um, but part mainly down to I mean the buzz around the Switch. I mean, for a year where they've pretty much done fuck all in yeah, terms of first party that. releases <laughs> like um, basically nintendo histori- yeah, his- historically they've been crap with third parties but this year it's a third party that have sort of i wouldn't say saved a switch but if, if it wasn't for all those amazing these amazing indie day- indie games that come out they'll be they'll be relatively little so yeah. it's all about the yeah, third party it's, it's the indie say games that, that saved it because i mean yeah. third parties haven't touched it either really like as in like the big developers no there's not that much come out for it yeah, it's you, just you could really say you games. could say that's good business sense from Nintendo getting making sure that they become the indie platform. Mm. Um, and as we've said when we when we went to Res, so many developers were saying the one question we're sick of is people saying <laughs> when's this coming to Switch. Um, it just shows that people like playing those games on that system. Mm. Um, so yeah, fair enough. It, I mean, you can't write it off uh, for that, but well, I just I would love to see more first party software come out. Sony did the same thing, didn't they, at the launch of the PS4? They really heavily courted, like, indie devs, mm. didn't they? There was, like, yeah. loads of stuff well, that came Well, they had out, to, really, because, um, yeah, they, they did. Else. They did push that. But that was, if you remember, that was another thing that you could tie to the success of the 360 mm. with, you know, um, that was it. That, Xbox Live they Arcade. What that game? Xbox Live Arcade, but what was the indie... They had, they like, had all that stuff. That they, they had the... Game yeah. of Dev or something. The 69P games. Yeah. Mm. Um, X-Play, like, wasn't it? Xbox yeah, Live X-Blick, indie yeah, games, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, and it, I mean that was that was all all that stuff was good. So I think the fact that you know Sony obviously saw the benefit of doing that with the Vita um, and wanted to bring that to PS4, but it was weird because they seemed to just like ditch it after <laughs> after like a couple of months. And um, you know at E3 this year, Microsoft had this big indie section for their uh, on their showing and. Uh, Sony, Sony didn't mention them, did he? So mm. the games did probably because they just feel they don't need to care anymore. They've already sold like over eighty million or whatever. It's fine. <laughs> yep. It's not. Yeah. 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 And also this week, um, Spider Man, Spider Man for the PS4 has become the fastest selling game of the year so far. It's uh, yeah. Uh, they... I was trying to decide whether that was uh, surprising or not, and I, I think yeah. the only the only thing that makes me the, the, the only thing that surprised me really was that that. It was God of War that was um, in – that was the one that it beat. No. Um, and it beat quite handsomely. Sorry? So it, was, it was Call of Duty World War Two was the fastest selling game. It's oh, the, really? Yeah. It was, I should, the article read, yeah. I read the other day, it said it, it's overtaken that, God of War. That's for single format, maybe. Yeah. But in terms of format, exclusive. Was, uh, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Um, but, the, I mean, yeah, I mean, God of War, if that was the one to beat. So you're saying this did better than Call of Duty? Yeah, it's it's the fastest wow. selling game since uh, Call of Duty World War Two. So, wow. yeah, that's, that's yeah, quite I, a big I, deal. I've been surprised by the amount, uh, amount, amount of hype around this, like, since it was first revealed. Like, I've always thought it looked like a straight-up 7 out of 10, which is fine. But everyone's been going nuts for it. Which, yeah, you, know, you talk great. to some people and it is a straight-up 7 out of 10. Well, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, no. I mean, yeah. I have I have literally no buzz for this game. I was I was yeah. watching um, uh, some bits and pieces on it, you know, some videos mm-hmm. and uh, all that sort of stuff in the week. Um, and I was kind of like, I'm an idiot, really, because I looked at everything that I looked at. I thought that looks cool as fuck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just thought, I'm never going to buy it because I'm not into Spider Man and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking, if this was just like take away Spider Man and the license and all that sort of shit. If I'd have just seen this game and it was, you know, generic superhero game, I'd be all over it. I'd be thinking, holy fuck, this looks amazing. <laughs> but I think there's something that sort of blocks me from going out and buying it because, I don't know, it's like I'm not into Spider-Man, so part of me thinks that I'll be missing out on the main bits and pieces around it, you know, like the mm. references and 
I don't know. Are, are you way more into Batman then? And that's why the Arkham games. That's why I've never. Them. No, the, the, here's the crazy thing as well. I suppose I I've got more time for Batman because of the films. Like I actually yeah. enjoyed um, the Dark Knight or whatever. Um, but I'm not really a superhero guy. I've never really been into it, and that's not this. Like, mm-hmm. um, it, I, I just I never got into the the uh, movie craze with all that stuff, and I never really. Um, I can see it, the appeal of it. It's just not really been something that I've been into. So is it the same as like with Star Wars stuff? Like as in, like you probably wouldn't be that bothered about Star Wars games because it's Star Wars, and you're just like um, you're just not not that interested. In it. But then saying that you did you did give Battlefront a, like quite a go, didn't you? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, I, I I played Battlefront quite a bit. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe I just I've just been avoiding all news from it because it's like okay, this isn't for me. It's a superhero game. Hmm. Uh, but then I've played like fucking um, Crackdown and. Yeah. And, uh, like the Saints Row games, which are essentially super. <laughs> I don't know. My brain's fucked up, is what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> just think, a mess like, of a human. One thing for me is that, because um, a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for, was it Spider Man 2 on the PS2? Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah it was like really famous for doing the web slinging better than like any game before or since. And this, like, this new one basically recreates that really effectively so everyone's like it's yeah but just how so many of all fun. those units that have been sold are based on that nostalgia well I'd, yeah. I'd argue not that much yeah yeah um, right. you know it seems to have picked up the casual audience as well yeah um, but it's also yeah, come at an amazing time like it, it, this true. was like the first the first big release of game season in the that's true it's just snuck in at the start hasn't it yeah yeah this is like okay, the, the drought's over Spider-Man's here now it's going to kick off so it's yeah, yeah it's, it's a shame timing. as well because that, that little uh, fastest selling record that they've got there Ain't gonna last for long, is it? Yeah. Mum? <laughs> <laughs> have, oh, uh, have, have we all seen the thing about the Easter egg? Yeah, that's what I was gonna. I was yeah. gonna come on to that. So there's, yeah. this, on. Uh, if you if you've not heard of anything about this, then David, yeah, no, sir. Okay, so this was where this guy called Tyler Schultz asked Insomniac to include a marriage proposal into the game, and it kind of hasn't worked out so well because oh he he said he asked them in may this year and then insomnia said to him look can you just wait they were like yeah it's a good idea we're, we're fine with that marvel was fine with it and they said can you wait until the 7th of september he said sure because they've been together for over five years and she would still be around in september but she lol. wasn't and <laughs> that, and she, yeah, like, she thought i think she'll still be around in september lol <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's worse because she didn't just dump him, she dumped him for his brother. And <laughs> Yeah, and so then Insomniac have offered it, to take did it Did it out. just say, like, from Mr. Smith? And then she turned around to the brother and just went, you did this for me? And he was like, yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, I did. So Insomniac have offered to take it out, but he said they should leave it in, and he said it's a good reminder of the mistake he almost made, which <laughs> is... Which is a bit weird, isn't it? Because she did the dumping, so it's not... You didn't really have a, a say in the matter from the sound yeah. of it, but... No, you but know. It's, it's more like just... Uh, well, I th- that's just weird. I think that, that's weird. I think oh, people are weird. I mean, just <laughs> get a ring out, mate, and get on one knee. You know what I mean? <laughs> just get it done. I mean, you know, I think if anything, game. this highlights the folly of AAA dev cycles being as long as they are. If you, you go to an indie dev, <laughs> yeah, they'll get that proposal out prompt. <laughs> No fucking waiting around for months. For, you know, it'll, like it'll be out in the early testing. access build. You know, yeah, exactly. Be- <laughs> exactly. It's just, yeah, so it's so gonna, is, game's is already out. They can just push an update like that. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah. I'm going to uh, uh, send an email to the Shenmue 3 uh, devs <laughs> saying, saying, can you put a message in your game saying, James, can you t- test your mic before we start recording, please? And then <laughs> in three years' time... <laughs> James, James will get that message and test his fucking mic. Um, I yeah, I right, okay. Let's ask this, Matt. If you could put any message in a game to anyone, who would it be? Oh, you can't do it on, on the spot. Yeah, just off. No, that's horrible. What are you doing? What are you talking about? Of course you can. That's what podcasting is. We're riffing, man. Come on. Okay, go to Sean. Right, why would you put that in a game? Forget it. Next news story. You failed. You flopped, <laughs> you flopped and ruined my little bit. No, but Go on. that would be a great thing. No, forget it, James. No, forget it, Matt. You're not up to the task. Go on. Next one, James. Okay, Ooh. Civilization VI is coming to the Switch. <laughs> hey. Which I put this in here because I'm just really excited about this. It's coming on the 16th of November, and it's going to include the base game and four additional scenarios. And uh, it's going to have it's going to have competitive and cooperative play for up to four players, but only over. I don't know if it's only over a local connection, but they mentioned that. But that mm. seems like a weird choice. Like if yeah. you're going to do that, because 
I can't imagine like four people are going to sit around for the days that it can take to complete one of those games. It's insane. Well, this, I mean, I'm not a big Civ guy, but I've always sort of wished I was. Is this going to work amazing. on a tiny portable screen? Well, it's not that tiny, but well, you know what I mean? This came out also on iOS like recently. Oh, did and, it? Okay. And it, see, I was, I was interested in this because I've always been a big fan of the series, but I've only ever wanted to play it on computer because yeah. the you know they released like the revolution versions. Yeah, and they, which is properly they, cut down, wasn't it? Yeah, and they they were fine, but they yeah. were not really what you want. They yeah. weren't like the full thing. It's mm-hmm. a bit like comparing like you know like the X Wing games and TIE Fighter with like the Rogue Squadron games. As yeah. in there's not the same level of depth by any stretch of the imagination like in it. Mm-hmm. But with I'm not sure I see I'm not sure if this if this version of six is exactly the same as like the PC version or whether it has been like cut back at all or whatever. But mm. it has got like on I was looking at it on like iOS and it's like it's it's sixty quid. Like if, if you want to buy it. I mean imagine that as like an app. Like Jesus. you never get stuff like that. Mm. So it that <clears throat> makes me feel that it probably is the full thing. So I this should work great. I mean I'm I cannot wait for this. It's um yeah, it's gonna be great. Cool. No one else? No? No, one no, no I'm, okay. uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've never played it on previously, but um, I guess I'll wait for the reviews. Oh, I could totally absorb your life. It's um, it's terrible. I just You, you <laughs> played them though, Dave. Yeah, when I was a kid, but if you remember, I, I played last time I played it was when I found out that my dad, granddad was very ill. So thanks for bringing that up. Next okay. story. Today, uh, PlayStation... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so, uh, do you know, I had an experience like that the other day. It was... Um, Go on. Go on did now. I tell you about this? I can't remember. No. It's... Well, you know, like, Chen was, like, over in China, and she was over there because, like, her family, like, her, her mum was, like, really ill and everything, mm-hmm. and yeah. I had to call, like, the airline to, like, rebook her ticket. So I, I called them up, and I had this guy who was, like, really excited and really happy, and he was just, like... He just kept, he, he just said to me, "Oh, you know, is she is she having a great holiday?" And I was like, "No, her mum's her mum's really ill." Like that. And then he was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Like that. It was it like, was, it's yeah. bad. You get into situations like that. Is you know, um, you know, when you go to a funeral of a close relative and you get back into work the next day and they're like, "Oh, nice day off," and you're like, oh. "Um," but honestly, now I just go, "Yeah." So yeah, it's fine. Know, I just <laughs> that's, like, that's what I said. I, just I was just like, "It's okay, don't worry about it. it." I'm just I don't want to make people feel like that. Yeah, it's just all. Awkward, isn't it? It's like really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they don't know, and they'll feel awful for the rest of the yeah. day. So you just take it on the chin. Now, I've st- I've thought doing the opposite thing of if like someone at work take like takes up like, the morning off or the afternoon off. I'm like, oh yeah, have you have you uh, how was the interview? Like, uh, yeah, I'll go with my nan today. So like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or or if like if it's really quiet, I'm like, who died? And I'm like, oh, actually, no, no um, two people aren't in because uh, yeah, I just so I just don't make those comments anymore. It's just yeah, got yeah. been been burnt too many times. <laughs> <laughs> if it was you that did that to me then i'd definitely tell you because i mean who turns around and says who died to someone like after you can't matt come on well, I'm just I, asking um, for trouble there one time one of my colleagues had like just found out her dad had died and obviously she was in a bad way and this other woman just walked in and went oh are you ill Ooh. like just like, no, no, she's found I'm out. Sean, uh, sorry, I really can't feel, uh, you know, I can't take that story seriously because the week after I told you my nan was dead, you yes, asked me, how she how's was. your nan getting on? <laughs> <laughs> explains, I had another friend who also had a nan that was very ill, but not yet dead. And I got confused. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that woman in your office had What are you saying? Friend. All nan- nans are the same? Yeah, yeah Sean. Just is that everyone has saying? the same nan. There's just one nan. Uber nan. <laughs> just one nan. One giant well, unfortunately, nan. Yeah. She is no longer with us, right? Okay. So yeah, Civilization Six is coming out um, on the Switch. Um, the other thing that's happened here is <laughs> the that... summarise there. Just <laughs> <laughs> recap. In case anyone had uh, lost track of. <laughs> yeah. So to clarify, Civ Six. I'm enjoying you know, it tonight. Because Pete, you know, about like, what tonight. we were talking about and stuff. So I thought I'd just you know do a little callback. Yeah, fair play. Fair play. Yeah. 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 So anyway, also today, PlayStation have had like a kind of event um, in Japan because this what is like a. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> it's a happy event it's or a, not? No, it's a pre. It's a pre like Tokyo Game Show like event where so they've shown. It's not kind of an event, is it? It's just, right, it just is it's somewhere else, James. It doesn't mean it's not any less valid. All right, it, it is an event. It's an event. Okay, we... official. Sony have had an event, yes. guys. So to clarify, an event happened. An event did happen. A kind, well, not a kind of event. An event. 
as as actually happened. <laughs> and so they showed off a bunch of stuff. So there was the Yakuza team. Like I've got their new game, which is Judge Eyes. I don't know if any. Sorry, of you... their new game. Yeah. I mean, I watched a trailer today, and it was like the Yakuza team sat down and said, "We got another Yakuza team. Uh, we got another Yakuza game ready, but we can't release that. I mean, we're taking the total piss, <laughs> right? Just." Give it a different title, no one will notice, and stick it out there. I mean, it's Yakuza, right? It's not. It doesn't... Oh, Is it literally right. set in Camarocho? I don't know if it's set in the same place. I mean, obviously, it's using, it exact, it's using the same engine, but okay. there was a lot more, like, sort of Shemu styles to some of the stuff, though, like, with the QTEs that they no don't really way. have it, that. It, it looked like a mix of Yakuza and Watch Dogs, and uh, there was another game that it totally Yakuza? reminded me of. Sorry? Was it also Yakuza reminding me of you of? Yeah, that's why I said Yakuza, Watch Dogs, oh, and for... what are you saying, mate? I, it, it was. It, don't worry about I it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you're slagging them off for making a game which is like the studio that made Yakuza, then releasing like releasing another game which is like building on that. Why are you I slagging? Think, that I think off? I, I. I don't think I'm slagging them off. What I'm saying is that it looks really, really like their other work. And and they've been pumping games out left, right, and centre. Well, no, they've been That's re-releasing stuff. It's not, <laughs> like, you know... Anyway, oh, yeah, we, explain oh, what games about. It takes a couple of seconds, does it? They can just do that in the lunch break. You just copy well, and paste you, the they code seem to, have to the done new console. The, the rate that those Yakuza games have been coming out, it is in their lunch break. It's been right. the same. Okay, so you play a character that seems to... There's a lot more detective work involved, a bit more stealth. It looks like a game based around those follow missions from the Assassin's Creed series that you might have played. Um, and, yeah, you follow people... How does it look like that? Because like there was, you know, those games, like those missions in open world games, where it's like, oh, there's a guy walking down there, follow him, but don't let him see you. you know? That's the most yeah. yeah. game ever, Dave. That's not just like, oh, that's what I'm saying. And it looks like they've based a game around that one no, mission. It doesn't look like that at all. <laughs> it doesn't on, look like that at all. Right, okay, I'm going to shut up. You explain to me the appeal of the, what what you got from this trailer. Well, it just looks all right, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 I've got nothing because I, all I've seen is I looked at that trailer and I thought that looks interesting. It looks like they've taken a bunch of stuff from the like the Yakuza games, which were like some of the mini games that were interesting. Yeah, like the combat, have... this town, the characters, the, the I story. Mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the, all I'm saying is that to an outsider who has only put eight hours into a Yakuza game, who also um, hates them, but yeah, go on. it looked. A lot like a Yakuza game. The combat looks exactly the same to me. What's but, wrong with that? Well, it just looked well similar. It didn't look like it had enough. Right. Okay. This is the best. I way mean, to be it. fair, this is a studio that has also put out Binary Domain, which is a fucking banger of a third person shooter. So it's not like they, this is the only thing they can do. No, like, no, no, no. What I'm, what, I'm not saying that. They're releasing a new IP, right? Yeah. Technically, this is a new IP. It looked. It didn't have enough in that trailer. Mm. Obviously, we don't know what the game's going to be like. But it didn't have enough in that trailer to suggest that it was going to offer enough that was different from Yakuza yeah, for you, to appeal to a different for, audience. Yeah, but maybe they don't want to appeal to a different audience. All it's right, just, mate. Fine. But I'm allowed to say that I don't think this looks different enough for me to get on board with it, aren't I? That's fine. You could totally say yeah, that. That's but fine. then you're, you're just slagging it off by saying them. it looks rubbish. <laughs> I didn't say it looked rubbish. I just said it looked you like... You did. You were saying it's like Assassin's Creed, like all that sort of stuff. Come on. It's just nonsense. You love Assassin's Creed. I don't. It's all right. I own you own every <laughs> copy of every game they've ever released, James. <laughs> that's true. But to be fair, I actively dislike the series, and I still end up owning most of them for some fucking reason. They're so easy to own because yeah, you get the free subject. With stuff How are you getting the on the user this week, Sean? Oh, uh, there's been a new Destiny thing out. You can't. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, go on. <laughs> go on. Next story. Well, I'm okay, just having a, wait, just quickly. I'm having a quick scat. I've not seen any of this uh, Tokyo there's game more, show There's more. There's more. I've got more yeah, of what yeah, they've yeah. got. So there's um, also they did more footage from from software's you know the Shadows Die Twice. There's more of that. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is being remastered for the PS4 and the Switch. I'm up for which... that. Really? Yeah, I think. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's I've definitely right. got a lot, of, <laughs> are you, are you a, lot of, a lot of fun memories of playing it back in the day. It may not have aged well, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> sure, now's that sleep deprivation guy, mate. <laughs> I'm up for that, I think. I don't know. I think I'm not no, sure. It's actually, rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, also... Does anyone else reckon, by the way, that that was meant to be announced at the Nintendo one? That got cancelled. Yeah. yeah, that's probably yeah. another one of them. I think, uh, I think also it was probably was, and uh, yeah, I think I, I'm not sure if this is in the schedule. I don't think it is, but I, I'm, I'm not even sure if they're even going to do a direct. I think they'll probably just you know announce a few things here and there about doing another direct. Now, what do you reckon? 
Why wouldn't they? I mean, they must have had it good to go. Yeah, it's not like they have and to... They literally just got to make a video not private anymore. They just got to click a button. It's not like they have to get on yeah. the stage and do anything, is it? I, I, you know, I guess. I don't know. I'm surprised they've lasted, like, this long, to be fair. I think it yeah. was the right thing to do, don't get me wrong, but I was expecting it to be up over the weekend. It's like, how long do they have to wait to, for it to be respectful? It's like when Total yeah, Biscuit no, it's awkward, died. isn't it? It's all, it's all, it's all good. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, so with that, there's also a new Samurai Showdown game. Um, new Front Mission related survival horror. Yeah. Uh, left Alive. Hang on, it's not survival horror, it's survival shooter. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Are you reading the same notes as me, Sean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you've linked us to him, you've put him in. <laughs> I can't believe you're reading the same... Don't ruin the news for me, (laughs) Sean. the same game. Don't know things before I tell you them. Uh, No, I'm excited (laughs) about this, because this is another one where it's some of the Armoured Core people that have left uh, from software, and they're they're working on this, so I'm I'm intrigued. But it doesn't seem to be... Like, there's mechs in it, but I don't think you control them. I think it is just like a third-person shooter. How many mechs games do you need? Uh, Literally as many as I can get my hands on, because there's not many. Fair enough. For some reason. Okay. Then there's also more Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff, but really, who cares? Mm-hmm. And then there's Everybody's Golf VR is coming to yes! Japan in 2019, looks which looks really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. And that and that was it. That's all they showed, because the Tokyo Game Show proper starts on the 20th of September. And the last thing that happened with the news is that Sony is finally saying goodbye to the PS2 in Japan. <laughs> it's, um, like, it's been out of production since 2012, but now the aftercare service is ending Obviously, it's still the best-selling console ever, but yeah, mm. it's it's now done, like done, done. Jesus, um, good. Uh, I mean, who <laughs> good? <laughs> who's yeah? But come on, <laughs> oh like, no, I mean, no, yeah, like, uh, yeah. Uh, with these stories, I'm always like, I mean, yeah. When they said they, you know, in 2012 they were stopping producing it, it was like, what? <laughs> They're still making them. I still, yeah, I still think it's funny when it's like um, FIFA 18. On the PS2. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The only console where they've announced they're not producing them anymore, and I've gone, yeah, fair enough, was the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> Sorry, the Wii U really? even. Fucking hell. Jesus. Yeah, I was about to say, the Wii, the Wii I could kind of understand. Yeah, you know, yeah. People still love that tennis shit. But, um, right, okay, that's it. That's uh, it. I mean, there's, we should start with the biggest game of the week, shouldn't we, really? Um, Matt, do you, who, so who's been playing Spider-Man? Is it just me? It's just you. Just yeah. you. I'm really surprised. I, oh, I really thought you'd also get it, James. But. I want to get it, but I haven't got enough money. So that's I a shame. Get it. So you know, people have come on here for insight on Spider Man, and unfortunately, they're they stuck got with Matt me. The, okay, the man who brings buy, zero buy insight. For me. Buy it for me, Dave, and I'll, I'll play it. Hold on, what? There you go, Dave. <laughs> Why would I buy it for you? Well, are you just having a go, saying like, you know, people have come on here to listen to this? And no, like... I, was, I was trying to piss out Matt. It was a little jab at Matt. Oh, like, okay. a little joke jab, at jab at me for Matt. not buying it. Okay. Oh, mate, you well, are getting sensitive. like proper paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> well sensitive. Yeah, because the way you've been already this podcast, you've been on at me like the whole time. So it's like, you know, I don't know if he has, <laughs> James. I'll be honest. <laughs> Uh, I think <laughs> pointing out your floor Thanks, there. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Not only that, we did send you forty quid this week out the uh, out the little pot, and um, you know, why did you buy that? I know you didn't like it. Oh, you didn't like it. I did bought you? an Xbox One X. Yeah. Spoilers. Is, that's the biggest news of the week. Talk about it later. <laughs> it's quite a news story. I mean, it's weird because we had to cut a big chunk of the podcast out last week <laughs> because I went on a game rant, and just before the podcast went live, I got an email from Game saying. Okay, we're looking into this. Uh, we think that we, you know, you should be able to do this offer. Um, we're confirming. We just need to confirm with the store managers and sort out a date when you can do it. And I was like, "Fuck, delete that," because if they hear that and then go, <laughs> "No, fuck him," like, what, what? I don't want this podcast to be the reason why I don't get an Xbox One X. So we del- remove that. Uh, the whole story. I mean, it was pretty boring anyway. You didn't miss much. But um, eventually, yeah, I went back into game on Saturday. And I I mean, I said to my wife, because she was with me, and I was like, I'm going to bring Harry in because he's a barrier. If it, you know, snark barrier. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to just... Because they've seen the tweets and everything. They're not going to get, like, arsey with me if I've got four-year-old with me <laughs> um and she said well how long are you gonna be and i said i'll be in and out i'll give them the xbox i know what the deal is and then I'll, I'll buy the thing and then come back out i went in there and they said oh we need to test it again 
And I'm like, oh, here we go. They said it would be 20 minutes. I was in there for over an hour. Jesus. Over an hour. I had to go up there and say, you testing my Xbox? Oh, yeah. No. Uh, and then it was like, oh, my fucking God. Um, so, yeah, Harry was just getting pissed off. <laughs> um, and I was getting pissed off. But it finally happened. Got it all plugged in. It's a good machine, isn't it, Matt? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I think it. Um, yeah, it, it, so how quiet is yours? It's silent. Yeah, it like be. I haven't even heard the fans whirl up once. It's it's been um, it's been beautiful. Uh, I love I love how it looks. Like I, I think it's just a, a nice tiny little box like that. Yeah. I think it looks good. Um, it's incredibly snappy. I mean, I know I had an original Xbox One, and apparently the S improved on things, but I mean it wasn't unusable. But when you hit the guide and it took, say, two seconds to load up, it was a bit yeah. like, like to bring up that side thing. It was a bit like, fuck's sake. And then I was playing um, Rocket League the other day and I, you know, did something. Um, so I double tapped the guide button to do the record that stuff. And it just like instant. And I was like, fuck me. Yeah, even that stuff's in, an improvement. Um, and then I installed Forza and looked at that in 4K. And my word, that what a jump. Like that does look like a generation jump. It, it looks insane. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Um, I, I haven't played much else other than uh, Rocket League, which again <laughs> we'll get to. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not been updated for the X yet. So it, you know, the PS4 Pro version still looks better. But yeah, but it, yeah, no, it, I'm, that I'm extra bit of speed makes such a massive difference. Yeah, I mean, I had a, it does. I had a one before, and it's just. I I barely played it really. It's just far too slow. Yeah, like just it just using it was just a chore. I thought, but now it's it's instant and uh, yeah, I absolutely love the machine. See, uh, I never got that far. I never thought it was a chore. It was just, I guess, something that I I got used to. Um, and then when I get this new box and it's just doing everything instantly, I was kind of like, holy fuck, yes! Now I could see why, you know, this is this is such a big upgrade. And you know, there is there is that sort of for those people that that are worried that they don't need these new consoles, I will say that you will always, if you were to get rid of your original Xbox or original PS4 and upgrade to a Pro or an X, you will get that feeling of, oh yeah, this is just the same thing really, isn't it? I'm just, <laughs> you know, doing the same thing. Obviously, it's not a new generation. You're not getting new games with it that, that, that look like a huge leap over what you've been playing before. Um, but I will say the jump from the Xbox One to the X seems massively bigger than it does for the uh, uh, for the PS4 to PS4 Pro. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I should have done last year, really. I should have just got upgraded to the X and kept the base PS4. Um, I would have, I think, I would have appreciated it more. Oh, and I'm happy that it's got a UHD Blu-ray player. I've forgotten all about that. So for very, very special films, I'll definitely be getting UHD Blu-rays mm. to watch them yeah, on the telly. I, I, I I always forget that. I mean, I, I don't think I'm likely to buy a Blu-ray, but uh, it, it's a nice option to have, I Why, guess. Why, though? Because isn't it just a ball late to watch UHD t content? Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> well, I watched it on, on Netflix. On Netflix yeah, so basically, yeah, so stuff on Netflix, but, like, that's kind of it. Like, the other day, um, we were renting uh, Infinity War, and I was like, oh, yeah, brilliant. I've got, uh, you know, 4K HDR telly. I'll find a way of watching it in 4K and HDR. Nope. Uh, unless you've got like an Amazon Fire Stick, um, which seems, as far as I could tell, that is the only way to rent a film and watch it with, with all the bells and whistles. Otherwise, it's just standard HD. And isn't, it, just isn't there a lot weird. of buffering involved? Because when oh, I, I try know. and watch 4K blue, uh, YouTube stuff yeah. on my telly, it always seems like a massive ball lake. I don't know. I've not tried uh, 4K YouTube stuff, but 4K Netflix stuff yeah, is, fine. Netflix is, is fine. See, 4K I tried 4K Amazon 4K Prime Netflix. is fine. Prime video. Wait, and what is that like? Two pound extra a month, but yeah. half the content didn't you didn't even notice the difference. Also, it's weird with Amazon Prime because they they you know for a while they kind of like highlighted what was UHD and now they don't. Oh it's really? Like, it's really weird. it's really odd to try and find it. It's um see yeah. that that's what I'm thinking with the Blu-ray player. It's kind of like for very special films that I don't mind spending twenty pound on for a UHD Blu-ray. It's yeah. beautiful just to have. That high, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. high quality content there. Ready, I'm willing to pay that. Is what I'm saying yeah. for very special films. And like, it is fucking so, mad that the PS4 Pro doesn't support 4K Blu-rays. Well, when it doesn't, now have I got this wrong? I have, hasn't the S got a UHD Blu-ray player? Yes, it, it has. Oh, yeah, the PS4 it is bad. That apparently, the PS4 apparently, apparently so his argument was just like, well, we don't think anyone cares. We think everyone will just stream 4K stuff. Which again, I'd love to. 
but not many people are giving me the option. It's really yeah, it depends yeah. on what like ecosystem you're in, doesn't it? Because with Apple, you can because it's uh, like yeah, yeah. You, you just like all the the stuff that I bought in HD, like of iTunes or whatever. It's they did mm. the free upgrade to four. Do you know what I mean? But it's not it, like so PSN like does film rentals and purchases, but you can't. There's no there's no ultra uh, yeah, ultra HD stuff on there either. So you know, mm. oh, come on, mm. give me give me an option. Oh well. <laughs> uh, while we're on this, no. uh, quickly. Um, so you know, I yeah got a new tally a couple of months back. I've been like not really fussed about HDR. Not don't really understand what the fuss is about. No one fucking told me you have to turn it on in game. I fucking I've been playing Destiny two, and after a bit, I was like, oh, check something in the options. Oh, HDR's turned off. Oh, I've turned it on. Oh, it's fucking mind blowing. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, like it's oh, absolutely yeah. astonishing the difference don't, it makes. Don't you get a thing like where it flashes up to say it's HDR? Like because whenever mine does it, like I get like a logo comes on the screen like no, in the top it doesn't, right corner no. it says it's like in you know, HDR yeah so then and I was like fucking hell what else and then it loaded up Monster Hunter World same thing just yeah see that's that's the other thing that the X does that I think is really clever yeah. you turn it in uh, you turn it on you literally go to the menus and it, it goes right here's what your TV can and cannot do <laughs> here is how to turn it all like it's mm. very very clear but I found yeah. that even with 4K content on the Pro it was mm-hmm. kind of like confusing mm. um but yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, actually, although this came out on Friday, I've been away for the entire week, and so I've only put two hours into it, which is a, a bit of a shame. Um, I, I guess also, like Dave, I'm also not into superhero stuff. I've never been into Marvel. Again, I like the Batman trilogy. Uh, but Spider-Man, again, I've never really felt anything anything for it, but uh, but I was excited about but this game. But you were going nuts before it coming out, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, like, I really thought you were a big it. Spider-Man person, because no, no, you no, were going no. crazy. No, okay. I, I, I feel I, like Spider-Man is like the most Matt Murray superhero. Why is that? Uh, just because he's, you know, he's like actually cheerful and cracks wise, and it's just, <laughs> just generally quite plucky. There, <laughs> there's a lot of wisecracks in this game, but no, yeah. no I, I mean, like, yeah, I, I, I guess Batman's probably like my favorite, like superhero, uh, you know, mm-hmm. person. <laughs> so that, that's how much I'm not into it. I, I walk on one person. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but, but your I, favorite superhero person. But I, I was fine. excited about this game just because, again, it's like the first big shiny game of the of the, of game season ever. So mm-hmm. I thought, hell yeah, and 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 it's been doing really well review wise. But um, yeah, so I didn't even play any of the previous um, Neversoft games or anything. Uh, but and actually, also I also barely played any of the Arkham games either. So this this is oh, mostly new to me, and a lot wonderful. of people seem to seem to suggest this has got a very very similar sort of uh, setup in that mm-hmm. it's 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 a sort of like three D brawler. It's, it's it's even got the same sort of I mean like I guess what, what, what what's the equivalent of like Spider Sense in the Batman games where you can sort of go into like detective mode? Is that it? Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah it, it's got it's got that sort of uh, that sort of thing. Um, it's it's got uh, yeah. I mean, so so so, a uh, setup wise, your your uh, Peter Parker. I don't know how this set this your rolls into like the. <laughs> I don't know how this rolls into like the comic book stories at all. Yeah. All I know is that he's been like Spider Man for for many many years. And he's working with the police. Does anyone on this podcast read the Spider Man comics? I mean, we're no. probably like the last people in the world Boop. to know if it's even canon or what. But uh, anyway, uh, no. it, he's working with a guy called. Um, I I should probably look this up. Oh, this is brilliant. (laughs) Spider-Man fans are going to be so (laughs) mad right now. He's working with this guy called Octavius. Now, I know Octavius in one of the films was like the bad guy, but in this he's working with him. Oh, God, the Spider-Man guy. If you're a Spider-Man fan and listening to this, I I just imagine, I'm I'm sorry we don't know it that well, but this is going to, even I could tell that they'd be going nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yes, it's Peter Parker. Now, I know that that in the film he was... (laughs) (laughs) This guy. I mean, from the sounds of it, this doesn't tie in with uh, the films at all. But well, not the recent ones. Anyway. Matt is is the Joker in it? That didn't work. Go on, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. The Joker's not in it yet, but I'm into hours in James. I'm excited for his entrance. Yes, yeah, so, so you're you're working from a lab assessment for this guy called Octavius, who I know is an enemy, but currently you're working with him, which is weird. Um, you you also work with the uh, the this like police chief um and you're basically well liked around the city um and 
Yeah, so so far, I made two hours in. I, I've uh, I, I've developed some. I've, I've picked up some of these these abilities. There's like three different types of abilities. One is more about um, about gadgets, and you can. Uh, there's like a huge upgrade tree, and the more things you do in game, you get these upgrade points um, and XP, and then you can basically uh, uh, go through any of these three huge uh, skill trees to either get gadgets or uh, defensive abilities or attack abilities. Um, so there's absolutely tons of things to collect and, and upgrade in terms in terms of uh, what Spider Man could do. There's also loads of those of um, Spider Man suits, which are also you can find them uh, across the game. You can also up- upgrade them when you go back to the lab, and each of those suits also gives you a different ability. Um, but so far, I made I made two hours in. I, mean, I guess one of the early things that. Um, that 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 the I've, I've really massively enjoyed is obviously just swinging around the city. It took mm-hmm. me like a few minutes to get used to it. Um, and when I when I started doing it, and I I was sort of struggling. I thought, God, I must be I'm such an idiot. Well, I don't know why I'm struggling so much. But having read some other people, uh, other people have said that there, there's a very tiny sort of learning curve. But and, and even now, just two hours in, I'm, I'm it, it just feels amazingly fun to swing around the city. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's got a really great mechanic where you basically hold down R two, you swing, you basically let go at the top of like the the arc of of your swing, and then you can press X to jump a bit further. You can also press triangle to basically do a, a mini zip wires across across up the, the the rooftops and that gives you that gets you more speed uh work for you know to, to help you help prepare you into your next swing but yeah just swinging around is amazing fun um and uh, and i believe with more of these upgrades and skills that i get i'm gonna be able to do that you know i'm gonna be able to swing swing harder and faster and all sorts of stuff um it, it's it's got these that those these like hidden backpacks around the world which, which definitely feels very very um crackdown inspired in fact even it's even got they've even got like huge like lights going off into the sky and they've even got the the beacon sound which sounds very similar oh, nice. to <laughs> which sounds really similar to uh to, to crackdown like when you first get told oh there's these backpacks that that peter parker hid around hid around new york like years ago there's like 55 of them <laughs> He just um, hid things from himself. I know, yeah, fifty-five backpacks and it's all just like stuck <laughs> around buildings around That's the city. Weird behaviour. Yeah, um, it, but it basically, like, it, he's like, "Oh, I remember these backpacks." And it's like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I know these fifty-five backpacks that I stuck around." Uh, Is that buildings. the worst? Is that the worst excuse for a video game sort of? Me- I don't want to say mechanic, but a, mi- a video game like mission of all time. Yeah, busy work. Yeah. Oh, I remember these backpacks that I hid. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find them again. I mean, why? Why did he buy so many of them? It's like I mean, it must have cost <laughs> a fortune. Yeah, and, and, and in each of these backpacks, it's basically like little like keepsakes and, and memories. Is like, and w- one of the early ones I got is like a drawing he he drew when he was a child, and then it's like his um one of the things he's got published in like the paper or something. It's all very it's all very weird. Anyway, so you got them. You've also got towers. Of course, you have got towers uh, to unlock parts of the map. Um, with we with each of those is like a sort of very very simplistic mini game where you've got uh you've got your sound waves and you're using the analog sticks to 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 rotate them to make sure that they that they have the same pattern as the sound waves you're trying to emulate and then you can open them. But there, there's loads of those towers around. I mean, again, I, I guess um a, a little bit a little bit like Crackdown. It's just it's just fun to it's fun to navigate the city and I've just been spending a little bit of time just getting going on getting in the backpacks because I'm sort of still getting used to. It. To um, the the um one thing that I have noticed now I'm not I don't know anything about this game I've not played it I haven't actually seen much game footage either but the one thing that I have uh, seen in terms of criticism towards this game is that and it it sort of ties in with what you're saying is that it's good but it's doing literally nothing new in terms of the open world and. Um, you know what you're actually doing from point to point in this game. Have you found that? Or? No, I mean again, I'm I'm super super early on, so that may that may change. But even but I, but I, I'm assuming at this point it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything drastically new. I think what it's probably going to do is just tie it up in a really nice package. It's I mean like, the combat's really fun, and that's how I'm going to get better as I learn more skills and and, and get more depth at, 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 the, at, the, at the combat. There's also the spider sense um, mechanic where if so if someone's about to shoot you or attack you like a, this thing this like white uh icon essentially appears over your head that's when you can hit circle to dodge if you hit if you when that when that goes blue that's when you can like press circle to do a counter attack uh and the, the more moves you can chain together by like um by throwing uh web at enemies and then kicking them up in the air and then going for another enemy and the more enemy chain together a little like power bar or meter um 
uh, go, goes up and then once that hits the top you can do is like finish your moves and you can yeah and you can chain loads of those sorts of moves together so combat is really really super fun again a lot of people say it's very similar to like the combat in batman mm. um so i think it does a lot of things very very similar to batman but it just does it in a spider-man just does it in a spider-man shell uh, I, I, graphically, I think it looks absolutely stunning. And I'll, I'll, I mean, yeah, the screenshots um, I've been seeing have been pretty incredible. Yeah, the screenshots. I mean, obviously, we've all seen about a billion uh, Spider-Man sort of photo mode uh, things shared on Twitter and whatnot. But but it, even that is really addictive. I, I'll be like, I, I'll be you know sh- shooting shooting across the city, and I'll just pause it if I think that the light is in a good place. And then I'll take a picture, and then I'll like, okay, unpause, you know, sh- shoot and swing around for like another like five seconds. I'm okay. I'll pause it now. Maybe this is also a good shot. I'm sure that is going to like wear off eventually but that the, the, the photo mode is really great with, with tons of different filters and you can you, you can do all you can like make your own yeah, like, the comics fantastic. and stuff <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. and it, I, 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 every, every shot if you, you know if you like swinging around the city just looks really epic and it, yeah that, that in the early game has been has been something i've been doing a fair bit of um yeah, I mean, I, I, unfortunately, I haven't played, I haven't played a, a, enough really. I mean, um, I know like a, a lot of people seem to have finished it over the weekend, so uh, maybe Ooh, they've been long. hamming it, or maybe it's just mm-hmm. not that long. I'm not sure. Um, or is it just that like story mode is sort of ten, fifteen hours, but then there's all the other shit to do? I guess. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, as, as well as um, all like the backpacks and other things, I've, I, there were other tons of other little, little hidden things you can do as well, I believe, and or there's loads of these um costumes to collect so yeah i, I bet you're probably right there, sean but no but i'm really enjoying what what, what we played so far um the, the, the swinging is just so fun that it's sort of it, that makes you want to have one more go just to swing to the next location because but yeah you know, because because just navigating the, the environment is is fun enough but um mm. yeah hopefully i'll have more to speak about that next week because uh, cool. unfortunately i've only had two hours on it which is annoying but yeah good game so far yeah, and I mean, I mean, the impressions I've been getting, not from reading reviews, but being seeing people uh, that are tweeting it, the side stuff not so good, the 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 city a bit barren, but it's got so many little touches in there um, that it you know it manages to overshadow that stuff that it's missing. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of side missions, I mean, I, I've done a few of them so far. Once you unlock the ability to see side missions, you basically see it's like red exclamation mark at various points, and you can you can you can swing up to the area or, or, or jump down so often on on ground level uh, of the city, and it's basically often it's someone getting. Um, uh, mugs and you go basically go down and, and beat like four or five guys up and then that person gives you a reward you get some xp and then you move on uh but 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 for each of those side missions you do you, you get like a different currency and you need that currency plus uh the stuff you get from the backpacks to make upgrades on your or, or to buy other suits so it does sort of force you to do the side stuff because that's 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 the key currency you need to collect mm. um yeah, no, I'm enjoying. It. I mean, it, it, it's just a, it's just a nice game to sit down because it, it's, it's epic and it, it's it, it, it seems to have come coming on or going along at quite a nice pace. Uh, I, I reckon it'd be it'd be great for the Christmas break actually, just like sit down with this mm. and just just you know just enjoy this for like a week or two. I reckon you have a great time. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I want to like smash it this week as much as I can, and uh, mostly because I need to sell it to play, get the next game. <laughs> whatever next game is although it's not really so Tomb Raider like, based on reviews which is sort of um, be, sort of good this will be uh, this will be the classic Christmas game that you could sit down and play over the Christmas period if you haven't sold it uh, instantly <laughs> right um, have you played anything else I've played tons of other stuff I'm, a lot of stuff so you I love you we played the Battlefield 5 beta um, mm. oh I totally forgot we played I that I should play that as well um, yeah yeah I'm a little bit confused really because I had a really, really good time of it. And the, we, we only played it for one evening, but I mm. really enjoyed it. However, um, if there's one person that I trust when it comes to Call of uh, Battlefield, sorry, it's uh, it's Chet Roivas, and he absolutely hates it. Really? Well, no, well, well, oh, we enjoyed yeah. that first mode. The second mode was a bit confusing. The, the, his well, no, chief complaint he... is uh, the lack of spotting, or sp- how spotting has changed yeah. Yeah. in this game. that's fair. I found that yeah, a bit weird. Yeah, he's saying it's like completely taken away what battlefield is and yeah, so, and it's becoming that style of shooter where you can just constantly get shot in the back all the time um now i guess i didn't really get to the point where spotting was a big deal while i was playing it i mean it was a big deal but we should explain what know, spotting is so spotting if you haven't played battlefield before that so you it, whenever you see an enemy in previous battlefield games you can basically press whatever the spotting button is and then they've they basically got a red 
uh, a red light over their head so you can see them uh, a bit easier in the landscape and also they're on the map uh, in this game they've changed it so you don't actually highlight the enemies you basically highlight the lo- the location that that yeah. enemy or enemies were in a little bit closer to say Rainbow Six Siege um, yeah it's basically just placing a marker saying I think there are guys around here and it will let you place the marker whether there are guys there or not which is yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I it, it was weird, and obviously, like the spotting is just such a key part of what about what's made Battlefield so good in the past. Yeah, so, yeah. but I, I mean, I, I, I believe they've probably done it for the right reasons. Um, so, I, I think it's probably one of those things where after a while, I'll get used to it, and I'm like, okay, this, this, this is good. Um, it, it's feel because I don't think they would have just like ripped it out and t- totally changed it without obviously having a yeah a huge think about it and and realizing that this was probably the way forward. So. It have was you weird not, have beta, you not seen what I'll ca- have I'll you not seen what Chet's been saying in the group chat? I uh, mean, he's flat out saying that he's not buying it. Yeah, he's saying yeah, they've, they've will, destroyed so. it. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Anyway. But, but no, I really but like. I I had a good time of it. Like I, yeah, I, same. It it felt a lot more like um, Battlefield Three and Four than uh, than Battlefield One did, mm-hmm. or uh, that was it, or Hardline. Um, so I, I mean, I just really got into it. I had, a, I had a good time of it. Um, of course, early days, and you know, the, God knows what the final product's going to be like. But uh, yeah, I had no issue with it. Well, I, so I we played it. two modes in the beta. Like the first one was was that snow map, and there's a not one without snow. And then the other one was in that town, which like um, is like the CN crossing uh, map mm. from Battlefield. You were 3. saying you were saying that you found it really confusing. But what did you find confusing? Um, I can't remember specifically. It's just that basically there was well, one they felt like that map was massive, and there was hardly yeah. any people playing it. So yeah. a lot of time I was just running through buildings, and it it didn't feel as controlled or as a, a, like as much of a flow like a typical battlefield. Uh, yeah, a, a well, game. I mean, is. I, I'd it just say, felt all I'd over the place. Really, I thought the map was, and I said this at the time. I thought the map wasn't very good because there was a lot of alleyways that you could walk down. Yeah, and then that was just it. You know, like you had to walk back, um, and then there was rooms with with doors, and some of the doors you could open, some of them you couldn't. Like it felt like there was a lot of stuff in there that had either been and the, removed. <laughs> yeah, or... and like there were some rooms you could go in, and then you were like, "I don't think the developers expected me to be in here because it looks like shit." Like, this... <laughs> like yeah, no, there weird, was um, empty I, I had rooms. a situation where I went up a staircase, mm. and the staircase was blown out. Yeah, so I I thought. But actually, it's not fully blown out. Maybe I could walk up that little bit of wood that's left. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe I found a new... Oh, no, there's just a brick wall now at the top of the <laughs> stairs. This is... Um, I guess I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> um, yeah, it was... Yeah, the, the the map felt completely unfinished. But uh, whether that will change before the beat, yeah, before the full release, I don't know. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 I enjoyed what I played. It was just... Uh, the, I mean, I've I've never got to the level where I properly feel, especially when, since they went from 32 players to 64, mm. I never felt that, like, you know, back in the Battlefield 3 days, there was times where it was like you would get into a team, quite a large team, and you'd feel like you were really working together. Mm. Um, ever since I went to 64 players, I always felt a little bit out of that, and it was yeah. kind of like you're just getting shot from everywhere. And that's what this felt like to me, but... I, I don't know. I, just, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, the, the the lives did feel like they came and went really, really quickly. So I, I, mm. the, the, that was a bit annoying. But again, I, I didn't know the maps. I was learning it. I, I felt like the first few games I had great fun. And yeah, I, I, I'd be definitely interested to try more. I, I mean, I, I'm really excited to see what this Battle Royale mode is like. Um, yeah. But, I mean, the, the main thing that got me, so I, I just played one full match, the um, control mode and so con- uh, Conquest, sorry, not Control. Yeah, Conquest. Um, and had a good time. But then afterwards, I was like, I haven't played a Battlefield game since 4, I think, and I barely played that. There wasn't really anything about this that was like, oh, fuck, this is new and cool and different. And <laughs> like, it seemed quite by numbers, apart from the spotting thing. Is that fair? Yeah, no, that, I, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it felt like a Battlefield game. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But, but um, then, you know, having not played one for ages, maybe that makes me more receptive to this because I'm like, yeah, actually, do you know what? <laughs> maybe it's time to let Battlefield back into my life. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, yeah you can build sort of fortification stuff now, like small oh, yeah, ones. Yeah. So, so, so I think that and the spotting are two big things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it looks cool, just like the, the snow map yes. looks amazing, I think, like the lighting and. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot, but I, well, I guess we'll see when it comes out a bit closer to launch. I mean, they, they're okay. panicking, aren't they? Because pre-orders are shit. 
Is that right? Apparently, yeah. Mm. So it'd be interesting to see if they try and counter that or they just yeah. ignore it. And well, then... so if you cut a certain corner of the internet to be believed, it's because they put women in it and they've ruined it. So, um, fuck those guys, yep. quite frankly. Right. I also played, just before this uh, podcast, I played a bit of the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 uh, Blackout yeah. uh, Battle Royale <laughs> mode uh, I on the beta. also tried this oh, cool. before okay. we started recording. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... I don't even know what to say. It's Call of Duty, <laughs> you know it, but they've done a Battle Royale mode. Um, yeah. I've only played like an hour, so it's it's hard to get a, 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 a real feel on it. I will say one thing, is that currently you have to hold down uh, hold down buttons to collect items, and in a, in well, a Call what? of Duty game, you have to hold, rather than just like walking over it or tapping it to pick something up off the ground, you have to hold yeah. down. And in a Call of Duty game, it's like you really haven't got time to do that, and spend a lot of your time sort of looking down. Um, yeah, like Call of Duty games, if nothing else, are fucking snappy. Like... <laughs> Yeah, that seems like a weird bit of friction to add. Yeah, no, that is that I didn't even pick up on that, but you're right, that was weird. Yeah, but but um, again, it, it, it's a beta. I, I I'm almost certainly sure that that, that is going to be changed. I know when I say that, I think well, they must have obviously done like tons of testing in house. Like, if why wouldn't the poor have picked up? So well, this is the, not the, great. The advantage, the advantage is, I guess, you're not just running around hammering the square button picking everything up instantly mm. there is that sort of risk reward of hold on it takes a little lit just you know a second to pick stuff up um so you better be sure that you want that thing on the ground yeah, you know, it just, it just feels get super clunky and not not anything like um obviously like, i think yeah, you're right yeah four, I, four, I, nine, I think i think they should change that I, I think you're right i i what i'm saying is that there might be a decent reason for it but i i yeah i don't mm. think that works i want to play call of duty not not this sort of stuff um I really enjoyed what I played of it. I mean, I had one game, but we lasted a long time. I think we got into the top nine. Um, and I just, yeah, really, I, I thought this is exactly what I thought it would be. Um, it's way more smoother than I thought it would be. Um, and the shooting feels fantastic because it's Call of Duty. Um, and if that's the one thing that they've got going for it, it's the, it's the shooting. Um, and yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. So, I'm f- I'm going to try and play a few more rounds before next week to see if that if if I pick up on things that I don't like. And um, yeah. there's always that risk because it is you are in first person, obviously. And um, there's always that risk that that means that you know getting shot from behind is going to be a pain. And in games like this, deaths like that are just horrific. Um, there was also this situation where you know we, it seems quite easy to get into a house and hide in a corner. And I know you can do that in PUBG, but it was a little bit different. This one, they're like it's kind of big rooms with um, platforms up that you can look downstairs and have this big open shot of the warehouse that you're in without any risk of being seen from outside. I, you know, that seems a bit unfair and a bit easy to just camp in the corner and shoot people as they walk into the barn. Um, whereas before, you know, you you have to go upstairs, and once you're upstairs, you can hear people downstairs, obviously, but. Uh, you can't just like overlook them and, and pop them as they're walking through. How um, how big is the map, Dave? Is it like PUBG it style? It seems big or... no. It seems like a, a sort of halfway house between Fortnite. It seems a little bit bigger than Fortnite, a little bit smaller than PUBG. Well, it, the, that's what I felt. Is the pace faster? Because one of yes. the things that I've kind of liked about PUBG is like it is a bit. I, I, it, you can play it quite slowly. Do you know what I mean? Like you get mm. it together, your group, pick up all your no, stuff. No, no, it feels, it feels faster pace. People are dropping like fl- flies. Yeah, it's definitely faster than that. Okay. Um, what I've liked is that you know there's obviously loads of vehicles around the place. I, I found a helicopter in one of my games, and although I was on my own, so I didn't, I didn't. And there's no weapons on the helicopter, so I flew around for a bit, hit a tree, and died. Um, also, what's the deal with the zombies in that? Because yeah, um, there I went into spectator mode when zombies died. around. <laughs> yeah, and there was someone hiding in a house, and I think they were camping. And then all of a sudden, there was just these zombies showed up and started battering him, and he was like, "Fuck!" and ran off. <laughs> I quite like that. Yeah, it's got that. And also, like, like, like so um, that you have this, like hang, basically this hand glider on you permanently, or there's like glider suits. So if you if you just jump off something that's really tall, you can basically press sprint uh, the sprint button and your glider comes out so you can get get away from say gunfire or whatever so quite like that um you have to you really do have to pick up a backpack because otherwise you run out of space super quickly um so you've got backpacks as well the armor is really overpowered at the moment if you have level three is like up to level three armor if you pick that up you can basically unload like clips onto people and and they won't die 
Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're obviously mm-hmm. definitely going to uh, definitely gonna, uh, debuff that armor because right now mm-hmm. you, you sort of feel invincible if you have anything. If you have a level two and a level three armor, you, you feel pretty invincible. I will say I, I got like I say what. Um, uh, I say uh, one kill like on average a game, and I got no XP. <laughs> you only I was only getting XP if I was like hit, hitting top ten or above, which I think sort of sucks. Again, it's a B. I'm sure they're gonna change that. Um, yeah, cause, I mean, cause they're, they're going to find I didn't get a kill it. at all, and then I've got zero XP. And like, I've, and on uh, Fortnite and PUBG, you get XP for you know for l- the long gear leave. You don't have to get to top ten, but also you know the more you loot, this and the other. Uh, whereas this, you t- seemingly at the moment, you get nothing unless you hit uh, top ten. Um, which I think sort of sucks, but again, I'm sure I'll get to change it. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna play more. Uh, I don't know how long the beat is actually on for. Although actually, so it's PlayStation until the, until Friday exclusively, or, and then it's like uh, actually I, I think maybe PC as well. But then uh, everyone else gets on from the 14th until the week after. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep keep playing it a little bit more just to see what the deal is. But uh, I'm excited to see what this is like, and then obviously um, what what the Battlefield uh, beta uh, is. Uh, so I'm, yeah, so, I'm so, 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 the, 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 the Battlefield Battle Royale game is what I meant. Hmm. Okay. What's that, James? I'll say I'm I'm kind of tempted to give this a go. But... Well, you might as well. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you're, on, if, if you're on O2, the O2 priority app's given out beta codes. So uh, I'm not. I don't <laughs> well, so, uh, maybe one, maybe listeners. But yeah, uh, it's good. And what else have we been playing? Um, and then Rocket League, of course. I'm playing with you, Dave. Uh, were you? Uh, yeah, we, we we played a couple of games like uh, before before the weekend. Right. Okay. Um, right. So, should I just quickly? <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go into this. Um, I, I don't know what you want me to say. Were you? Were you, uh, Was this Saturday night? No, no, I was away the weekend. It doesn't matter. We played some Rocket League. Okay. I don't remember it. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So the the Rocket League pass was launched. Um. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Um. So the basic idea is that there's a basically um a series of unlockables that you get through ranking up your rocket league pass um it, you can do that for free uh or you can pay a premium and get more unlockables while you're doing it um the problem is there's two things the first the xp is really confusing like really confusing um sometimes i would lose games again so you need 20,000 xp points to level up um and I was some games I was getting twenty uh, two thousand for winning, uh, two thousand for losing, and then um, one thousand two hundred for winning. It it was kind of like I was thinking, is this based on individual points? But it's not. There's all these different buffs that you can get if you play at certain times and do certain things. But um, it's not really clear what that does. And also, I hit a bug where I played three games in a row and it didn't give me any XP, which was frustrating. Um, but the unlockables you get are really cool. I'm really happy with them. The only problem is if there's one unlockable that I really want and I have to be rank 70. Now, wow. if you're getting 20,000 um, to level up once, right, you need 20,000 XP and you're getting, on average, 2,000 XP a game, you know, that's 70 times 10. Yeah, but, yeah, but that, that's going to change games. massively because the more you rank up, you then get XP bonuses. And if it's, That's it's, true. Yeah. I am too, I'm too away from getting an extra 5% yeah, XP I, bonus. I, so. I, but by the end, you basically have like plus 120% and, yeah, and also people you're with, I think when they get it, it helps to like if, if a group of you yes, have Yes, that's it. Bonus, you, you, so. pass, you pass boosts on to people in your party yeah, and exactly the people like that you planned with and stuff so like that. It, it won't be so bad. And obviously, and, Obviously, there's no challenges in this, and that obviously also helps with like XP and Fortnite. You know, that, that's basically how you get to rank yeah, 100. See, there's as not I said, challenges as I said, I'm glad it? there's not challenges in this because you don't want to get teamed up with a, a bloke who's trying to do ta- challenges. You're trying to play Rocket League, and he's trying to get aerial like ten aerial shots in. Like, it's I don't want that stuff. Um, so I, yeah, they've said they're not adding it yet but they're looking into it. I don't know how they're going to look into it without completely destroying any sort of playing with randoms or with friends or whatever, because yeah, that's a complete pain in the ass. Um, yeah, but no, I'm, I, I mean, it came out on Thursday and I'm already ranked nine. Uh, the aim is to get to rank 70 before the close, because that how card that seasons? they're offering up is really nice. Um, Caesars, it goes till mid November, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you're definitely doing it. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, and also it's not clear if you can earn enough keys to buy the next 
uh, yeah, I looked into it because I because I, I, I thought, okay, I, I think you can, but you have to get all the way to the to, to seventy, all the way to the top. Because I, I counted up. Basically, well, seventy is not the top. There's more after that. Okay, cool. Well, so, I, I, I I'm not sure how far I got down to the end, but I counted up. I I you could earn at least ten keys, and I think it's ten keys to unlock a the pass. So it is, but it's quite clever because it keeps giving you crates as well as you're playing. So, I mean, it's going to get to a point where you're like. Oh fuck it! Should I just use one of these keys on a crate? Um. So yeah, I don't know. I, I I've just I I've been playing an unhealthy amount of Rocket League for the past week. Um. <laughs> and I've been in, and I'm still enjoying it. So, uh, if anything, it's got me back into playing a game that I love. So I'm I'm really happy with it. Uh, I just don't know if I could justify paying eight pound every time this comes out because it is a bit of a grind to get anywhere. Um. A good grind because it's Rocket League, but a grind nonetheless. That's it. Is that it? Matt, uh, for you? Yeah, that's it for me. Yeah. Um, Sean. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I was playing PUBG, but um, well, which is now totally, oh, totally different just, on Xbox. Yeah, just very quickly. Um, they, they've updated PUBG to the full retail release, is what they're calling it. I, oh my god! What a, I've never seen an update do so much. Genuinely, like. That game was always janky on Xbox, like beyond belief. Even on my older Xbox, when I got the update and started playing it, I was like, I'm jumping out of the plane and seeing buildings. Like, that never <laughs> happened before. It actually feels like a normal third person shooter now, like it's smooth. Um, yeah, it just really, really, really good. Um, what an update that is. Uh, so, yeah, if you've gone off of PUBG on Xbox, um, why not load it up again? Because. It is vastly improved over to what it was like over what it was. It's got some new modes as well, isn't it? As in, like you can choose like short games and stuff like that. Well, like, well there's a, there's things. a new map with a smaller yeah, and it is mm. a lot quicker. And that map is really good, by the way. It's the jungle map. It's yeah, I, I understand it's been out on PC yeah, but, but, for a yeah, while. But it's got but... smaller maps, but yeah, but also also uh, a different mode within each map. I can't remember what's called, cool, but yeah. It, and, and, oh really? Yeah, and, I didn't and, know yes, that. And, and so so that that makes things quicker and and stuff. Yeah, I can't remember what's called, cool, but. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for the first one, but for the other two, uh, yeah, you, you, you can change change the mode, and it's still got quicker. the problem where you can have games where you're like just walking around for God knows how long, and then you just get mm. shot in the back. Um, they know getting around that is that is uh, not a good experience. Yeah, that's the nature of the game, isn't it? I think it's part of the game. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, yep. and that's definitely uh, sure. for me. Uh, so I finished Donut County. Uh, still love you. Still loving it. Are you <laughs> loving it? Fucking so the basically everything I said last week um is still true. Um it does not like yeah. the very last mission is like you're playing it and like this is what the entire game should be. It's like a little bit more involved and it's like moving between different locations and you know, interactions that are actually almost bordering on actually being puzzles rather than just you know <laughs> interact with something in the most obvious way. Um and then it ends and <laughs> I don't know, I feel bad because, I don't know, I feel like I'm playing a different game from everyone else because I've like looked at reviews and everyone's like, oh, it's so charming and the puzzles are really clever and it's like, they're barely puzzles. Like, <laughs> I, I, I've I heard uh, people talk about this on a podcast not too long ago mm-hmm. um, and they were saying that it it's a really good children's play toy. That's, do you think yeah. that's a good shout? I think like, I, if I bought it, <laughs> do you think Harry would love it or no? Yeah. Possibly, but then, like I say, because the levels are so short, it's not like <laughs> like your only interaction with the world for the most of the game is you move this hole around, and if things are big enough, like if your hole's big enough for something to fit in it, it will fall into the hole, and then you just so you start with smaller objects, and the more things you get in the hole, the bigger the hole gets, and then you you can start putting bigger stuff in. Um, but that is it. Like, so there's basically there's just a set order. You have to swallow everything in the level. Right, and it's just a case of figuring that out, which is easy. You know, you just do it by looking. So there's not much of a, it's, I don't know, not much of a toy aspect to it either. You just like, oh, well, I'll swallow the objects in size order, and I'm done, and, and that's the end of the level. And like, like I say, you know, there are bits where it's a little bit more involved. There's like, a, did I mention the level with rabbits? I can't remember. No. There's a level with some rabbits in it, and then if you if you get two rabbits in the hole. They shag and loads of rabbits. Oh, spew you did out, mention it, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like uh, further into the game, you get a catapult, which is like 
so you can start spitting out the things that, that the hole has swallowed um but again it's literally like you'll be just swallowing loads of stuff and it's like oh i've got something i can spit out oh it's the exact object i need to use for this next puzzle oh i just need to shoot it shoot it at one specific thing and then i've won uh, yeah I just, there's nothing to it at all um so i just Weird. don't really understand why i don't know don't know don't get it is it just one of those games that's like overly quirky so people just pick it up too much I do, yeah i do wonder if it's got a bit of a past just because it's got like quir- quite yeah. funny dialogue it- and nice music and it looks nice which you know yeah. which is all true um but i just yeah there's, there's no substance to it at all for me um I, so it, just so go yeah i mean do you, like, it uses quirky humor to try and kid people into thinking it's a good game it feels a bit like you, that it's yeah. basically yakuza yakuza <laughs> And you know, it, like there's a there's a boss fight at the end, and you're like, yeah, why wasn't this? Like, why wasn't stuff like this throughout the game? This is like kind of interesting, and yet it's the hardest final bit in the game. It's, what uh, are you playing on? Uh, PS4. Oh, right. so, so yeah, it's unlikely so, I mean, it's, to be. You know, yeah, some like, like dodgy rip off thing that you've accidentally downloaded, and then it turns <laughs> out you can play play a completely different. I mean, game. yeah, like I say, it's on iOS as well. Maybe it, it seems better there because you know it's different different way of playing. But uh, yeah, don't know. Didn't get it. Shame, shame. Uh, yeah, Battlefield Five beta, as mentioned. So Battlefield V is it? Is it five or V, or is that is it either five. or? And that's why it's a clever five. joke. It's definitely five. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. But the main one is I've been playing Destiny Two Forsaken, the new expansion that has come out and is here the we big, go the big year two Heard one. Heard good things. Heard good things. Yeah, I'm a fan. Um, it's it. Like, there's a weird sort of period of adjustment because they've changed a lot of the structure in terms of, like, the way gear works and stuff now is basically they've made a lot of it like Destiny 1 again. So the main thing for a lot of hardcore Destiny players is that when you get legendary equipment, um, it now has, like, random abilities. Um, Whereas previously in Destiny 2, every legendary just had set perks. Um, like you know if you get headshots with this weapon they will cause an explosion which damages other enemies or, or whatever stuff like that um and i mean i i was fine with that um but the community found those random roles of, of perks really interesting and I, and i get that but like we're talking about people who will they'll want a specific gun and they will work towards getting it but not only will they want that specific gun, they will want that specific gun with a specific set of perks. So, like, rather than just being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to work towards getting this weapon, it'd be like, I'm going to work towards getting this weapon maybe 10 times until I get the yeah, roll that I want. Yeah. In, you could re roll in Destiny 1, though, right? Oh, that's true, yeah. I, yeah you could scrub point. it and yeah, re-roll Is the that an option perks. in this one? I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, but that costs, like, valuable materials to do so, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of... Like, that is a level I do not engage with Destiny on. But then equally, I've already found myself in situations where, you know, I've I've done a, a mission or an event or whatever. And, you know, for whatever reason, it's given me the same item twice. And I've gone, well, hang on a minute. Which one's better? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and it's been interesting to be like, well, hang on, this, you know, this gun's got these abilities and that's sort of more relevant to the way I play or the class I use or whatever. So I'll keep this one and I'll bin the other one. So that's sort of cool, I guess. Um, and it means, you know, the sort of the multiplayer meta is a bit more varied as well. Like with, you know, Destiny 2 as was, um, like depending on the last patch, there's, there were just guns that were just better than others and every fucker would use them. Whereas now it's a, like, it's a bit more chaotic and you're not necessarily going to know what everyone's got, um, which is cool. Um it's weird in that they've like because obviously you you know when this year two expansion comes out you go from ble- like I was like a th- I had like a three sixty light character which is like fully sort of end game level and then suddenly this expansion comes out and I'm not an end game player anymore I'm suddenly I'm halfway through the campaign you know so you like you've got your set of legendary gear with a couple of exotics that you're like this is my guy this is what he wears they've figured out all the abilities or everything you know and suddenly that just goes out the window. And you sort of like, oh, but it's okay because I'll get, you know, higher level stuff and I'll infuse it into my old gear and raise its level. They've made that a lot harder to do. But oh, I don't right. know if so, only... so they're forcing you to try and change things yeah, up. Yeah, I don't like, expansion. I don't, yeah. So it forces you to just use new stuff, which is kind of interesting. 
but also i don't know if it just like so they've added the materials that you need and um, so like you need to use um like more legendary shards you need to use masterwork cores and you need you know they're like pissy materials you'd pick up when you're just like faffing around on a planet so it costs like quite a lot of them to infuse your gear but i don't know if that only seems like a lot because as i say because i'm not at the end game anymore um so it might be that by the time i get to like 550 low or whatever i've got loads of those materials and it's actually quite easy but but yeah so it does force you to use like so you're back to using blue stuff like blue rarity stuff which feels weird um but again yeah, once you I, get your I, head I, around it's always it, weird and so i'm like oh, i'm having to use green things now yeah <laughs> it's like you've just got to not be precious about your character anymore basically um but yeah the campaign so far has been a fucking riot um the first mission is amazing um it's a prison break and it's the one where spoiler Cade dies um yeah i can't believe like, he actually dies <laughs> he does seem to actually die like i'm yeah. <laughs> i think i'm about two-thirds of the way through the campaign and there's 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 not been any hint of like oh there's a way to bring him back um so yeah um the, the you've way to imagine that's going to happen it wasn't he like widely regarded as like everyone's favorite character oh yeah he's the only likable character yeah, so it's a bit i mean maybe they're like going for a big like gut punch in the story but i don't yeah, know or maybe they just couldn't afford nathan fillion for i wish more media did that though yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was one of the things that i really really liked about the original walking dead um mm-hmm. graphic novels oh yeah yeah it was like it didn't give a fuck who died mm. Like that was, you know, I mean, it got a bit silly with it where it just <laughs> dropped characters every time it felt like the, you know, mm. it needed to for a big issue or whatever. Mm. But um, yeah, and no, I, it was the, the whole point in that stuff was like, oh my God, there's this really important character. And it's like, boom, now they're dead now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that, that's that, exactly what makes Game of Thrones so amazing cause, yeah. because no one is safe from that show. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, every week you're like, well, literally anyone could die. And yeah, I think, I think that's one of the big pulls of that. So you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the sort of the thing about Cade being the only likable character is sort of rammed home by the fact that, yeah, so he's gone and instead we've got this guy. Um, called the Drifter, who's like the oh, yeah, exactly. I hate him and already. He, yeah, he's the oh, I hate him. Biggest fucking non-entity in a game that is already full oh, of them. Oh, I hate him. Um, so, I hate him already. <laughs> so that's he like help. that Jack guy from Mass Effect Three. <laughs> well, you've been trying to push that character. And the, the problem with Mass Effect Three was not the ending; it was that guy. <laughs> oh, just seeing him around my ship. Ooh, do you want to choose him to come on a mission with you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> just stay on the ship <laughs> sorry uh, no, sorry um yeah so that's weird and yeah so Cade dies and to be fair there was a cut scene it wasn't even the bit where he dies but there was a cut scene where i had feelings but it was really weird because right do you know the thing about terminator 2 so you know in the first terminator arnie's the baddie and in the second one he's the goodie and in all the marketing for the second one, they were like, look, he's the goodie now. But if you watch the film, it's actually really clear that you're not supposed to know that. And it's like a cool yeah. reveal when Arnie actually goes get down and tries to shoot the actual bad Terminator. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. It's been all over the place. I didn't realize in, in um, Destiny 2 Forsaken, your main character now speaks again in cutscenes. Yeah, I saw that in the trailer, and it was yeah, weird. Yeah, <laughs> I, I completely missed this. And yeah, there's the cutscene where you first speak. Like, it's even, like, joked about, like, Cade's, like, dying in front of you, and even says, like, oh, yeah, lost for words, as always, or something. And then, yeah, and then basically there's a cutscene where you, you're, like, mourning Cade with um, Ikora and uh, fucking, what's his name, Lieutenant Daniels from The Wire. And, um, and your character speaks up, and it's, it's really obvious that they're, like, really shocked. And and as was I, and for me that was like a huge moment. Whereas to everyone else, it's like, oh yeah, he spoke like they did in the trailer. So, <laughs> so I found that odd. Um, but that's a cool thing, like because I, I did find it weird that in Destiny Two they were like, oh yeah, you know your character that used to speak, they don't anymore. Um, so glad they brought that back. Um, struggle. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love shit like that. No, yeah. I mean, the battle between someone that's writing a story and someone who's trying to market the thing must be insane throughout. Yeah. Like, Fight Club. <laughs> Come and watch Edward Norton and Brad Pitt play the same character. <laughs> like, it's just like fucking hell. Um, uh, really, uh, is there anything really? for Destiny 1 they haven't brought back at this point? Like, how? <laughs> so obviously, Destiny 2 is like a big, big, big shift, and then gradually people are like, no, bring that back, bring that back. And even is Iron and Banner still good again? Uh, they, haven't re- they haven't redone Iron Banner yet. I imagine that'll be a way off yet. Um, 
I mean, they've they've ditched like so you're not collecting tokens all the time anymore. That's pretty much gone. It's it is just the the resources that you find on the planet. Like that's what you get for doing events and stuff as well, um, which is fine. Just simplifies it a bit. No harm in that. Um, yeah, the 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 way the campaign's structured is a bit odd. Like the you know typical destiny stru- uh, destiny campaign structure is like it is like between six and ten story missions and then you just blast through those and then all this other stuff opens up whereas this is a it sort of chops and changes between the two so it'll be like right do a mission right now do like four bounties for this guy so that he trusts you then you unlock the next story mission and then it'd be like right go do some events or go do this or that or an adventure or whatever then there'll be another proper story mission which is fine. Um, I think I'm okay with that because a lot of people would like blast through the story missions and be like, oh, fucking hell, is that it? And it's like, well, no, because there's tons of stuff after that. But it was a bit weird in that, you know, you'd get a Destiny expansion, finish the campaign in three hours, and then there'd just be this weird sort of period where it's like, yeah, we won. Also, there's still loads to do, which did, like narratively yeah. didn't make a huge amount of sense. So that that's kind of an improvement as well. Um, How many new locations or planets are there in this? So there's two. Um, I've only seen one of them. Uh, the, la- the the second one is like basically once you finish the campaign, I believe. Um, is that one called the Dreaming City? That's the Dreaming City. Yeah, because I've heard incredible. people yeah. kick off about this thing called like the Blind Well, and I was going to ask you about that. But I oh, you no, don't no, know about it. No idea. Yeah, I've not not got that far yet. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, the, so basically you get this new area, the Tangled Shore, which is like a load of rocks in space ch- that have been chained together. Um, it's fine. Like the <laughs> In some of the, I can't remember if it was the trailers or those little streams that Bungie do, they were like, yeah, we're going for like a Wild West feeling. And it's a bit like, were you? It's, it's like, because that does not, I don't know, I do not, do not feel that at all. Um, we're trying to get some of the Red Dead fans yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you're uh, saying there's no saloon doors in space? There's not a single saloon door, no. Um, oh, prophetic. But I mean, yeah, but it's fine. Like, it looks quite nice. And there's these new enemies that are kind of interesting. Um, and yeah like the new area is pretty big it's quite varied loads to do so fine um and then like i say yeah apparently the dreaming city is just something else entirely it's just loads of just events kicking off all the time there's like apparently it's fucking massive people are just spending ages just exploring it and finding weird things there's a there's a magic cat that gives you items that no one seems to have quite figured out yet fucking awful um yeah so i'm yeah well up for that can't wait to access that um gambit mode holy shit it's so good it's, <laughs> have you, any of you seen anything about this do you no, i've heard a, a, no, a new mode called gambit was coming but i didn't actually look into what it was so okay was so it's it? this weird sort of combined cooperative and versus mode where so you've got two teams and they're each in their own little arena and there's like waves of ai controlled baddies coming at them um so you're, you're fighting like normal enemies, and when you're killing them, they're dropping these little uh, called moats, moats of dark. Um, and you pick them up, and then basically you have like a container in the middle of the map. Um, it's like a big tank. And basically, so you collect these moats, you run back to the tank, you slam them in, and that then sends like a big enemy to the other team <laughs> for them that they have to deal with. <laughs> and oh, okay. So the more moats you gather, the bigger a thing you send over to the other team. Um. And also, there's a portal which opens up occasionally. Like you just get an announcement, like right, portal's open, and one of your team can go through to the enemy team's area and start taking them out. So you'll get situ- like you can pretty much just play it as like a, um, you know, like just against AI opponents and like as if you were just playing it cooperatively with the odd enemy player coming in but sometimes you collect you know you do really well you collect a shitload of moats, fucking slam them in the tank. You send a massive enemy over to the other side, and then it's like portal's open mate and you're like oh yeah fucking yeah go on then <laughs> and you go over to the side and they'll be like so when you go over like all the ai enemies are treated as like allies so you're there just standing shoulder to shoulder with like fucking massive bosses and stuff like yeah just fucking kicking oh, the shit out of the other team that sounds so good it is really good um and then basically yeah, the first team to bank like a certain number of moats summons like a massive boss that they have to fight and then beat it and the first person to beat their own boss wins um yeah really good like pr- properly enjoying it um i think it's really got some legs um again the, yeah the the character the fucking drifter it, like it, that's his thing is is gambit mode he's he's no shacks like he's not he's not like a fun announcer yeah <laughs> um 
but yeah, yeah, properly impressed with that. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, but yeah, really enjoying it. I don't, and, I don't know if it's um, sorry, go and, on. Your old, and your old crew all playing it again. I presume you're all like totally nah, into not it, really. Or? Everyone's fucked no. off. It's <laughs> Oh really? Um, yeah, it's basically uh, me and Chris Van, um, and that's pretty much it as far as I'm aware. Um, wow. So yeah, I mean, I've joined the uh, finally uh, joined the computer game show clan. Um, so like, I've yeah, like if I was um, stuck for other people to play with, then you, like, you obviously you can just see the clan roster and I'd be able to like jump in with other people yeah. if necessary. Open invitation for our listeners. There, yeah, there you go. Um, Play games with Sean Bell, with specifically Destiny. Podcast host. Famous po- Game with fame, they yeah. called it, didn't they, on the Xbox? <laughs> um, okay, James, do you want to do your your uh, shout? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've got very little this week because I haven't really played a lot. I mean, I've, it's pretty much the same as last week. I mean, I've been playing Dead Cells still, and I, I, kinda, I feel like I'm still making progress with it, but I also feel like I might never finish it, <laughs> is the other thing with it, because it's... It, see, for me, it always this game really feels like, depending on how far I'm going to get, is how lucky I get with weapon drops. And it's like, now it's taking me like 30 plus minutes to get closer to the final boss, and then it can all go wrong in a second, and then it feels like I've just wasted a bunch of time, you know, yeah. like, kind of doing that. Even though, like, it is really fun. Like, the, the combat is still really good. It's just... You know, like in Dark Souls, how you get, you know, sometimes you have like the run up to the boss. Do you remember those ones with the dogs yep. mm. and how annoying that was? Yeah. Imagine doing that for 30 minutes, like each time you wanted to have a go at that boss. It feels a bit like that. And the bosses don't stay dead in this either. So after you've done one, you have to go back and you have to often do them again. And oh, like some of them, yeah, it, it is easier after you've like upgraded a couple of times, but it's still like a slog sometimes to get through them. So. As I said, it's still really fun, but it's just I'm not sure I'm going to stick with it, you know, like in the same way that I did with Hollow Knight because with that, I always felt like I was making progress in that, and it never felt like it was up to random luck as to whether I was going to have like good progress or not. Whereas with this, the drop, the drops, it really seems to depend on how well you're going to do um, with it. But it's good. It's just I don't know it's it's annoying me a bit. It is that it's because of the roguelike style of it. It's it's kind of inevitable that it would be this way. But yeah, fair um, enough. The only other thing I've played, I mean, I've played um, Yakuza 2, I'm still playing that, and honestly, I mean, I'm 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 up to chapter 8 now, and I've got to say that I'm not enjoying it as much as the other ones in the series that I've played so far. It's still good, it's just that the story isn't grabbing me, and I'm just finding that, like, the main sort of villain, inverted commas, they got in it is, like, I found less interesting than the ones in the, in the other games so far. But... It's more just because I'm only up to chapter eight, so it maybe it's gonna suddenly like blow me away or something. I'm not so sure, but oh, it's that's um, what I was hoping for, but you know. Yeah, well, I'm willing to give it keep giving it a chance, so you know, it's uh, I'm not just gonna I'm bin it off because I, I don't want to read, you know, like text. Um, right. And then the other thing I played is Strange Brigade, which we played last night. Dave. We did. We 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 haven't played that much of it. We played one level. Um, yeah. My word is that good. <laughs> it's very good yeah and it's it's really, weird really because when it. i when i because it's i mean when i start what it is i mean what is it it's like it's a sort of it's a co-op shooter isn't it basically yeah that feels a bit like left for dead but isn't because the one thing i wasn't so keen on with it is the fact that you know like with left for dead when you're like shooting zombies and stuff there's there's real like feedback mm. from what when you're like we usually don't really get that with this because you're fighting like in maybe uh, because I, I didn't feel that you really got that apart from when you did a headshot then you got like yeah. a big like thing from it but like shooting like the bodies of like enemies and stuff like especially like skeletons and stuff you don't really get much feedback from it no i think I, was... I think you're right but i think that will come when you you start aiming better because yeah a lot like i mean it does remind me of left 4 dead a lot not in terms of what you're actually doing when you're playing it but the sort of structure's the same you know, um, there's four of you building up to a thing. Uh, you know, it's got themes that are based around, like, this is trying to imitate these old b me, the black and white B-movies and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the teamwork doesn't feel as es- essential as it did uh, in Left 4 Dead. But the shooting is obviously... Because when you're playing a game that's full of enemies, um, you you kind of... You, you can't have auto-aim in there. Because yeah. the amount of times you'd be aiming at the wrong thing or whatever, so there's, it feels like there there might be some help there, but it feels like there's zero auto aim, and it that 
is a bit of a wake up call because you're so used to relying on that stuff that when you play a game that hasn't really or doesn't lean on that so hard it it really makes a difference should i like, holy shit yeah no i need to be really accurate here i need to concentrate um but i mean forgetting the negatives for a second the I mean, the enemy types that you're you're fighting. There seems to be plenty of neat little touches around the place that um, that you have to do to get to the next part of the game. Like, for example, there was a barrier. We we were playing with one other random, weren't we? So it was three of us. Yeah. And when the first the first level we did with there was four of us, but we, but we walked in just before he started a boss. Um, the second level. There was we played it from the start of the level and um yeah there's there's like sort of mini puzzles in there that are not too taxing but uh yeah the one that we came across was a massive barrier and we were like, Well, clearly we have to get through that barrier, but we got no idea how or why. So we all went walking around this area trying to find what to do and then uh James found a cannon that he could fire and I was like, I wonder if you could I wonder if there's another cannon that's pointing directly at that barrier and there was and it was like we blew it up and we're like fuck yeah and then the, like <laughs> cutscene played out and um but more importantly it's it's manic as fuck like the yeah. amount of enemies that it chucks at you mm-hmm. um but, yeah yeah i mean it's it is yeah it's especially i mean i was talking with cj on twitter about this from the player one podcast and he was saying like horde mode is even more like that like really really intense like because they just throw even more stuff at you because we only played this in campaign but why that's so good is because I mean we only figured out like towards the end of our play session that like there's this mechanic to the game that like encourages like a kind of a risk reward. It was like, so thing funny because I mean I played this on my own midweek, literally on my own, so no co-op partners, just to get a feel for the shooting and stuff. Um, and uh, I I still had a good time just blasting away and stuff, but I could tell that that is you just can't play that game in that way. Um, it's completely pointless. And um, but what? But it didn't tell me this in the tutorials. If it did, then I missed it. So what happens is you've got a Overwatch style super ability, mm. um, and that's indicated with this big circle at the bottom that fills up. Uh, and once it, once it's full, you can use your character's special ability. Um, now. You build that up by not just killing enemies, but you then have to run over their body and pick up these like blue gems. And I was saying, this is cool that, you know, um, but it's like, honestly, it takes ages to fill up. You need so many of these gems. And then James worked out that if you hold the, what would normally be the shoot button, if you were firing from the hip and not looking down iron sights, you bring out this amulet um, and you use it. It's kind of like Luigi's vacuum, isn't it? You sort yeah. of point it into a direction and then it like soaks them all up. Then all of a sudden you're getting a special ability every five seconds. Like literally you just, you blast away, you wait until you've got a bit of space, then you pull out your amulet, suck all these like crystals up. Um, and then you've got your special ability there. And then that was such a game changer because we were constantly pulling off these special moves. Um, and it felt like we were having a really big impact against these massive enemies. Um, the other the but, other cool thing that it's got it's got like loads of environmental um traps so uh there's things like you can blow up barrels which release logs that take out loads of them or spikes come up from the floor or these wicked little spinning razor blade things you shoot a gem on the top and it pops up and then starts like chopping them all down so there's this whole thing about right okay there's this big enemy here let's move him sort of bait him over to here and then we all just like shoot the shoot the trap and fuck him up and take loads of life off um the one thing that I'm not too sure on is that uh, everything in the game, all the loot, all of these gems that I've been talking about, they're all shared. So, uh, sorry, um, they're all single use is probably the best way I put it. So if you find a treasure chest and you open it, you get a shit ton of coins. No one else gets anything. No, so, I don't think that's true, actually. That's what it I, felt like yesterday. I I thought it was that, but then a couple of times I went over when the other guy that we were playing with was getting stuff, and I got stuff as well. But so I maybe it's like didn't. if you're in the vicinity or something, I don't know. Yeah, but. I think you've got to be close by or whatever, but this guy that we were playing for the first part of that level seemed to have played that game a lot and knew that level inside and out. So he was just running into all these little secret areas and picking up all the treasure chests, and it felt like I was sort of missing out on a lot of loot. Um but whatever, man. Like, I mean, uh, that's... If that's the okay, case, that absolutely sucks. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of that, but it doesn't really... I, like, ultimately, I don't think it really matters. If I get really into this and then it's then holding me back from upgrading my equipment, then I guess I'll be pissed off. 
Uh, but for now, I'm, I mean, we're so early on that we, you know, we've barely got formed a proper opinion on this game. But yeah. the last night's session, I really, really enjoyed James. I, I, I thought it was like, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I'm looking I forward mean, to getting back to it. It's it's definitely, I mean, see, I, I love co-op like shooters. That's, I mean, like, I, I don't play all this stuff like Battlefield and stuff like that anymore, really. I just, this is the kind of thing I like, like getting together with a group. And then just like taking on like CPU and stuff is just I love it and this this looks good so far I'm really I really want to see like how the weapon upgrade systems work and like what the variety is of like locations and stuff because it's good it's it really it's it's very positive start you know I just love how, I love how like um I love its style you know I like yeah. that whole the whole thing plays out with a narrator that's like what's going to happen to the strange brigade now yeah I must say that that really put me off in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 really good. It is really yeah. good. Um, and by the sounds of it, you can turn that stuff down. There's like sliders to sort of turn the you know over enthusiasm down. I mean, it it pissed me off a little bit because again, I was listening to Giant Bomb last week, and they were talking about this game, and they were like, "Thank God you can you know turn down the British quirkiness. Ah, oh, <laughs> that stuff makes me sick." And I thought, you put any other country in in front of that. You know what I mean? You'd be in trouble. That podcast would get shut down. <laughs> well, how comes it's okay to go, we oh, fucking Brits with a... I ain't been funny. I played a lot of video games where I could have done with turning the American <laughs> down a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but we won't go there. We won't turn this into a world war. Um, I will say that I love that stuff so far. It's not got annoying. And uh, I found it's been quite like relatively funny uh, at points. So, uh, yeah. I. I'm I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's we uh, it's need good. to do that, James. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, join it. Strange Brigade is the name of that game. That was the game we played at Res. I really enjoyed it at Res as well. I said it was like. Did you? The you played fir- there. I didn't realize that. What are you taking the piss? Because I mentioned it a few times. No, I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I don't remember you playing it there. Okay, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I said it was remember the, that. Yeah. I said, well, no. I said to you, Sean. I think you'll like it because. It feels like a third-person shooter version of Dynasty Warriors. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah. No, I, I think that, yeah. I over-egged that a little bit. <laughs> um, but then saying that, I think we were playing Horde mode, and there was a lot more characters on sc- on screen at once. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe that still stands. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there were times where I, I I didn't get it so much last night, but when I was playing it at Res, where there was a huge group of enemies, and I just lobbed a grenade, and they all like flew up into the air when it exploded, and I was like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> And at the moment, it's taken us quite a while to take down single enemies. Mm, it was a lot yeah. easier to do at Res. So I'm Maybe hoping... the weapons are upgraded in there. Yeah, or I think that, that's I mean. it. Yeah. I mean, we were saying the rate of fire on my assault rifle is dog shit uh, at the moment. So hopefully that all comes with the upgrade system. And I'm interested yeah, I mean, to I, see... I started off with a rifle, which was like just a single shot. And it's like, if you miss, it's like, it takes a few seconds before you could like kind of fire again because he's like reloading and it's, no. it's, it's great when you score a headshot, but then otherwise it's not so good. So I, I switched out to a shotgun pretty quickly. Your, and, your crew would love this, James. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain they would. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's really good. Cool. All right. That's it. That's what we've been That's playing. It. I mean, it's my turn, but all I've been playing is Strange Brigade and uh, Rocket League and PUBG and we've already done them. So should we get onto questions? Yeah, yeah. go on then. Yeah. Uh, right, emails. If for some well, ungodly on, reason you want to send us an email, you can do so at the computer game show at gmail.com. Alex D did that. He says, Hello, everyone. A couple of weeks ago, Sean started to say something and stopped himself by saying, I might have mentioned this before. And Dave told him that, yes, he had said it a few times. It got me thinking which story from a computer game show host has been told on air more times than any other? We have the famous Matt almost getting the don't shoot anyone achievement on Mirror's Edge story. Then there's Dave's Then there's Dave's story about his midnight console launch in Tesco. <laughs> Long time listeners will be very Really? Fr- I haven't bought that on much, have I? Yeah, well enough. It's been a, a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, uh, I genuinely what <laughs> What the Tesco? I, I thought I only really did that for the. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, just as long time listeners will be very familiar with those two, but there are any other oft told anecdotes that steal their crown as the most told story on a podcast? I think, right, there was a period where um, uh, every time we mentioned crane machines, Sean said, <laughs> You do know that thing about crane machines, right? And how they work, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. There was that. There's also every t- like, James, Sean references my moto measuring things a lot. Yep. That's quite funny. Are these all me? Um, is that where this is going? No, <laughs> not intentionally. No, 
<laughs> but now you say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it. Um. Uh. No, I think I can't that's think of any old more, yeah, actually. I mean, I know, I know, my Mirror's Edge one comes up. <laughs> it's such a weird thing because, like, you know, obviously, generally speaking, in terms of like your actual relationships with other people, you generally know which stories you've told them. Occasionally, you might slip up and be like, "Hang on, have I?" No, I'm it? terrible with that. Uh, okay. <laughs> but like with yeah, podcasts, I, I've got like no I have no idea, and because you oh like, god, yeah, I mean the hundreds of hours of podcasts exactly. that we've done, yeah, and like there's... obviously there might be stories I've told you guys on like a personal basis, but then it's not come up on the show, so I sort of think, oh, I kind of remember telling them, but I think that was a private conversation, and and never mind the fact that like obviously as the show grows and and you know and like not everyone listens every week so you do often just yeah, get so you get people... away with repeating stuff quite a lot yeah um, yeah you do like not knowingly but you know yeah it's just, it's a weird thing come to speak of that sean mm. do you know any good my moto facts uh he did you know he carries a little tape measure with him wherever he goes is it a tape measure or a ruler i can't remember my own fucking you know this. story now yeah i'm the expert <laughs> if anyone should and uh yeah and he uh guesses the size of objects and then measures them to see if he was right oh, how did he become a good da- game designer <laughs> 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 james is quite good he doesn't repeat stories too much that's true. Uh, yeah. No, I yeah, don't think it's difficult to get speaking. James to talk about himself quite a lot. I find. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. And it will stay that way. <laughs> so it's fine. He does keep going. He does like text me on an almost daily basis. Going, do you remember when like, like my kid just don't know their age because I just keep fucking with their birthdays <laughs> and that. I saw what was it? I was watching something on TV the other day. And they said something like, there was like a dad talking about, um, yeah, I've, unfortunately, I was away for my daughter's birthday and yeah, you can't really delay that. And I sort of just <laughs> laughed to myself and went, you fucking can. <laughs> <laughs> you totally can. Never, never knew, never you see, will that's, know. Because that's definitely come up a lot, but that's us retelling the story to you yeah, no, there's, to there's make sure you don't There's a difference between us using someone's anecdote yeah. <laughs> against them and, uh, and then repeating the anecdote. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're all pretty, on relatively speaking, I think we're all pretty good with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm really surprised that that's the one that's been picked out for me because I genuinely thought I'd only mention that the week <laughs> it happened and that's it. But yeah. fuck. All right. Uh, right, Ben Bowers says, Hello, gents. Destiny 2 has landed on PlayStation Plus just under a year after it was released. On Rush is now on Xbox Game Pass. No Man's Sky has changed dramatically since its controversial launch. Battlefront 2 and Shadow of War scrapped all the loot box malarkey that initially marred the opening months. And now we hear about DLC for Spider Man before the damn thing's even released, probably meaning at some point next year there'll be an ultimate edition with all the DLC thrown in anyway. Not to mention, I waited a mere eight weeks after God of War launched to snap it up for 25 quid. So outside of Nintendo, first party releases who in the main appear capable of releasing fully complete games from day one not always mind you with all the patches updates and price drops flying around the place is there any point in buying a game at launch well yeah if you really want it like it's something you're really into (laughs) that's it isn't it like if you want to be part like you know in the past i've definitely really enjoyed like being part of the conversation and like and you know sort of unraveling stuff like the day it comes out and like being part like breath of the wild was a big one for that i think because there were so many things like people were just discovering so much that i feel like if i come to it six Saying months that, later i mean i managed to avoid it all i oh, played it true. a few months after yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, and i've yeah. really really enjoyed it yeah. it didn't affect me at all okay um it's a mindset thing um yeah. I, I i mean i'm i get super excited about games and i want to play them as soon as possible mm. um part of me wishes that I didn't because yep. as you say games drop in price very quickly these days and it's just uh, you know not only that there's a lot to play yeah like I'm thinking at one point I'm thinking Tomb Raider's coming out um uh Life is Strange you know Red Dead's not far far away you know there's all these FIFA's coming out soon but all I want to play is Rocket League. I wish I had it in me to just go, do you know what? I'm not going to buy a single game now for a long time. I mean, it's yeah. a bit difficult for us because we do the podcast yeah, and say, everything. Yeah. If we weren't podcasting, I probably would just stick with one or two games and that would be it for months. Yeah, but yeah, if we, See, if we weren't podcasting, I would, just, I would now say I'm not buying a game for the rest of the year and I'm going to put all my life into Rocket League. Mm-hmm. See, for me, it's not about like waiting for it to be like a, fe- like a feature complete version or whatever like that. It's just 
there's too much stuff anyway. Yeah. Like this, also, this that's, just... that stuff with um, uh, Spider Man. That's that's like the norm now, right? Yeah. I mean, every game announces yeah, like DLC every game's before. got a DLC plan. Yeah. Well before like, it's out, like. Surely and they announce people it yeah. well these days like, well, they, why didn't they put it on the disc? Is it on yeah. the... Like, surely yeah, people understand that this is a key part of keeping re- revenue in for the game and helping yeah. further development of new games and keeping studios alive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, We're well it's not like, well, if it's done or, or if it's new, it should have saved it and put it on the, on the disc. Like, <laughs> everyone understands DLC is a key part of this, these things now. Um, yeah, and, you know, and even Nintendo are doing DLC, like Mario Kart 8. That was wicked. And they actually, but generally, like <laughs> the the biggest releases as well. You, I don't think you'd feel like terribly short changed with the amount of content that comes with them when they first come out. Like, no, you're yeah. right. If yeah. you look at like God of War, that was there was a lot there. You know, yeah. just like for the yeah. initial release. Yeah, like, I, f- I feel like it's been a while since we've had a game that has seemed like criminally short, and then when the DLC has come out, you're like, hang on a minute, this just finishes the game. Like I don't, yeah, I yeah. can't remember the last time that happened. So, that happens less and less. Yeah, um, but yeah I mean, I, I mean, sorry, go on. For getting it, yeah, it, it really. I think the main reason to get it on day one is just being part of the conversation. But you shouldn't also let that, you know, feel like you have to get it on day one. Yeah, you know, like yeah, for sure. No one should. I mean, for, for like, well, I've, I've got to maybe I don't know, put it on a credit card or borrow money or this and the other, you know, to get the game because you feel like you have to be there day one. These do, these games do go down in price. Mm. You're not really going to be missing out on anything except for like the buzz on Twitter. Yeah. And you can go along with that and enjoy it without the need to play it. Um, yeah, it, there's, like, there's a, there's a the lot of only, pressure. I feel like the 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 only other reason that I can think. Sorry, Matt. The only other reason I can think. I mean, to answer the question that you might be tempted to buy a game day one is online competitive games are fucking harder to get into if you're joining months after release. There is that. You know what I mean? Like everyone around you has already cracked the the maps. They know the, you know, the best, you know, you're just going to go on and join and get hammered. Well, yeah, I mean, like me me trying to get into Siege, fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a difficult thing um, to do. But then, like, yeah, and like, I know an excuse for me in the past has been like, yeah, if it's something heavily online, it's like, well, I need to get it day one because everyone else is, and they might get bored of it and wander off. It's like, well, if they if they do do that, maybe you probably just should have never got it in the first place. <laughs> like, if it's something online focused and everyone's bored with it inside of two weeks, then it was never a good idea. You know. <laughs> True. So, I mean, uh, True that. playing devil's advocate, the other end of this is obviously, you know, your Steam sales, where you're just like, oh my god, there's all these games I meant to pick up and never did, and now they're all three pound fifty, and you buy them all and never fucking play them because you haven't <laughs> yeah. got time. Um, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you haven't got time, and it's cost you so little that you don't think like, oh, I should play that because it's cost me forty quid. You know. Well, yeah, there's that, and the fact that no one's really talking about it, yeah. so it's not like you can use that in a social situation where you go, yeah, hey guys, Hotline Miami's good, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> you, know um, I mean? you know, like yeah, so like yeah, because zero, like I've started playing it and I'm enjoying it, but the new stuff's coming out, and I'm just sort of more. Like, I keep being pulled towards new stuff, even though I got Yakuza 0 for, like, 15 quid or whatever, and it's, I'm, you know, and I like it. Similarly, like, my brother's lent me God of War, and that's been sat on the shelf for three weeks, which is ridiculous, because it's meant to be incredible. But, again, because no one's banging on about it, I'm not thinking, like, yeah, fuck, I need to get into that. It's just... It You've got to get that done for game, game of the year, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, yeah it's got to be daunting. Yeah, there is that as well. Like, if I knew it was a 10-hour job, I'd, you know... Be more inclined to done for game of the year, Sean. Uh, uh, we yeah. talked about it briefly earlier, but yeah, obviously the, two, the reviews of Tomb Raider have come out uh, today. In fact, and it, yeah. it's not it's not tens, which which I'm sort of thankful for. As much as I love the first two, and like if that was a solid ten, I'm like I, I never game wanted to try and get or this mm. and the other. So it, I'm a sort of a relief actually. I can yeah. maybe pick it up later because I know I enjoy it, even if it hasn't you know done amazingly reviews. I love the first two, so mm. yeah, no, same here, but. <laughs> The stuff that it's being criticised for sounds horrific. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like all the stuff, oh, and there's a lot more stealth in it. No, the good thing about Tomb Raider is that stealth was like, you can do it, but that just so you, I, I mean, it was so non-essential mm. that you, you might as well just run in and shoot people anyway. So, yeah. But if you like stealth, then it's in there. If they're making that like sort of, by the looks of it, a big part of the new game, fuck that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, insta fail stealth sections underwater with piranhas. It's a, I think it's a little bit easier to to wait 
if it's a single player experience like that. Yeah, for sure. You'll get to it and get into it later. But but then this, is, right. but then this okay. is why everyone started chucking multiplayer in, wasn't it? Because they True. knew it was Say. a compelling thing. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. Tweets. Uh, Stuart Baker. Sorry, yeah, if you want to tweet us, it's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter. Um, Stuart Baker says, I'm currently playing Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, and loving how batshit crazy it is. What is your favourite game with an utterly insane storyline stroke concept? I mean, that's the ultimate, I think. Yeah. The, the <laughs> yeah, new Colossus is just... Mental. It was, yeah, I mean, it's off the charts. The Towards the end of that, like that scene when you're on the... When you're... I don't want to spoil anything. I was going to say, because uh, yeah, regarding, already regarding the previous tweet. question, I haven't played this yet. All right. Yeah. Movie oh, God, scene. So good. Movie scene, I can say. Okay. That is really good. Uh, like, I mean, it's just, that's where it really goes off the rails. The scene where your wife helps you at some point towards the end. Right. It that just keeps was ramping just up jaw ramping dropping. Up. Yeah, yeah you, was, you should play this before God of War, actually, Sean, because it's a lot really? shorter. Okay. Yes. It's not that long, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, okay. It's, it's jaw droppingly like, what the fuck <laughs> have they just done? It's written like, so well, like it's acted so well. I, I love the way, it, like the, the cutscenes are shot. Even yeah, it's just it, and obviously and set the it to easy though, fantastic. Sean. Mm. Set it to easy because <laughs> yeah, some of the, some easy. of the areas are just yeah, that's the worst thing about it is the actual shooting. Um, some of just so, yeah, so I remember reading that and it just it was so strange because the first one was just great. Um, it seems a weird thing for them to fuck up, but but the yeah, uh, yeah the, 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 that scene that I was referencing, I cannot yeah. believe someone sat down in a boardroom and said, "What if this happens next?" Like, <laughs> you, and and everyone just went, "Yeah," like no one just went, "No, that's that's too much, mate." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a very good game. Uh, for me, it's got to be El Shaddai: Ascension of the Metatron. Um which is a game, it's a third-person uh, brawler that is based on the Book of Enoch, which is an old Jewish apocryphal text, which is, basically means it's possibly part of like Judaism stroke Christianity, but probably not. They think it's just made up as opposed to the actual um, Bible and what have you. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's about a guy basically having to go down, to, he's an angel, so he's not an angel. He was a hu- was he a human, and then he became I can't fucking remember. He's a human who was allowed access to heaven, I think, and he's up in heaven just studying away because that's what he loves to do. And then they're like, right, load of angels have fucked off down to earth, so we need you to go down there and batter them. Um, <laughs> and it, yeah, it's just absolutely off. It's not. It's just bizarre. I mean, Dave, you played a bit of it, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I I got relatively far in it if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, it got a little bit too samey for me. I know you really liked yeah. it or whatever, but yeah, it got a little bit too repetitive for me. No, like, I absolutely adore it, but I'm like, not not many people did. So I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not saying everyone must play this game. It's, I didn't it's hate it. Taste. Yeah. Uh, if um, there's any consolation. But yeah, like you, your like partner in crime is Lucifer, who is basically Satan, but before he fell. So like, he's still an angel. Uh, voiced by Jason Isaacs, no less. Um, and he's just like he's just this cool guy with like gel hair and time, leather. Yeah. yeah, he's always on his mobile phone, and he wears some cool jeans with like a pattern on him. And he like clicks his fingers to stop time and stuff. And it's, yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Any other Any, examples? Not I can think of. I mean, yeah, Wolfstein is just so crazy. That's that's certainly the one of the last few years I can think of. I remember. Do you remember towards? I mean, this is obviously an obvious one, but. Metal Gear Solid 2, like towards the end of that, that's when yeah. that all starts to go off the rails. That's quite interesting. And um, now recognised as being massively ahead of its time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, uh, just... That was still one of my favourites. Everyone, like, every yeah. time I see people talk about massive, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> they always cite that as, like, the worst one. But, I mean, no, I, that's I, stuff yeah, I, was, I was a big fan, yeah. Yep. I think there was that whole "Hey, you're not Snake" thing that pissed a lot of people off, and they can't. Well, let that yeah, go. but like, yeah, because people didn't get that. Even like the whole point was, it was like, yeah, you were playing as someone else, but it was the whole thing of like viewing Snake through someone else's eyes. Yeah. So it's like it's still about Snake, and it's still like, holy fuck, Snake is the coolest guy ever. But and I'm now appreciating that as like a newbie who doesn't really know what he's doing, and that's why it's interesting. Mm. But um, yeah. People are uh, idiots. Ooh, people are so bloody Ill, idiots. Mate. Why don't they all just think the way I do? Because I'm clever. Adam Turner, 
says, any games you guys are hoping or aiming to play at EGX? Now, I've not actually looked at the lineup properly. I'd look at the lists. There's a couple of things. I mean, yeah. I, I want to try Soul Calibur 6. I know it sounds ridiculous, but, <laughs> but I haven't played one of those since, like, two like yeah. ages ago, and I just mm-hmm. would like to see what's what's happened with that. I mean, I'm just having a look. Destiny Two Forsaken's there, guys. Yeah. Oh, if you FIFA wanna, Nineteen. You try that. Out. <laughs> no, FIFA Nineteen. I'd be. I'd, I wouldn't mind giving that a go, actually, just to no, see how no, it feels. No, it, you know. it won't only be out a week before. Isn't isn't FIFA always out like a week before EGX, and yet it's still like hours of queuing? I don't know. I, gar- it, I guarantee I it will be. It'd be. Sure yeah, yet. you'll have four copies by then, James. Yeah. I've got. I've got my pre-order in, but I, I can't which, remember which how many. Uh, uh, PS4. As okay. as the as the vote went, it's it's all happening. Oh, as the vote went, I mean, yeah. as always, like I'm scanning through the list, and there's tons of stuff I've never heard of. So, I'm I would put money on you know when we come to do the show, like the things we're most excited to talk about will be things we've just discovered while we're there. Definitely. Um, I mean, Beat Saber's there. Fancy a go on that? Yeah. But I mean, it's VR, so the queue's going to be ludicrous, I, isn't it? Speaking it's of VR, be... I really want to. I'm really excited to try out Dreams for Media Molecule. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see yeah. what that's about. We'll see what it's like. Oh, and Tetris Effect is there as well, so that'll be a thing. So um, you look at it, there's like there's tons of like indie games and stuff on there, but it's like from the titles, I don't know what any of these are. So it's like it's when you see them on the floor and then exactly, so yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Although around. I've just noticed there's a oh, there's a game called Doggo. Of course there is. Sure. I've, I've it's 2018. Hate that shit. Eh, Hecking Doggos. I, yeah. I'm definitely interested to see what the Division Two is like because uh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sort of uh, so, I'm quite quite excited for that. Um, mm. I'd tell you one game on that list that I thought I am definitely, definitely, definitely not going to play at this thing. <laughs> and yeah. it, life is strange. Yeah. Why would you yeah. ever do that cannot, to yourself? Can't be a worse game to honest, play at a conference. I thought I thought you were going to say PC building simulator, but yeah, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. that one. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> if I had a choice, it would be PC building simulator. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, no. What the hell? It's not the sort of game for that that environment. But no, yeah. not really. Unless it was like a. I don't know. Yeah, unless they sort of went right. Here's like a nice little sort of vignette demo bit. But yeah, but I don't know how you would do that with a game like that. So yeah, give that a miss. There's a okay. there's a dev session about it though, isn't there? There is. Yeah, it starts an hour before our one. So um, okay, so, so don't go it, to that. Anyone? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, go to that because we'll be in the audience and we'll just start hours after. <laughs> We're not going to do that. That's a joke. Please do not go to that. Are we not? Session. Uh, sorry okay. if you're listening from Square Enix. Uh, right, Adam Way says, "What are your favourite pizza toppings? Thick or thin base? Stuffed crust or traditional?" I've never understood thin base. No, me no, neither. So uh, my wife does thin base all the time, and I, I, I yeah, I've don't never get understood it. it. I like that massive bit of crust at the end that you dip into Frank's hot sauce. Oh, that <laughs> is that is where it's at, or a little bit of mayonnaise. I'll, I'll go I was going to say, yeah, yeah, Domino's garlic mayo's. My, yeah, my move. Yeah. Uh, um, in terms of pizza toppings, basically all the meat I'm allowed yeah. and barbecue sauce. It's basically all the meat. Agreed. Isn't it? Exactly the same. Agreed. Yeah. The meat. The meteor <laughs> yeah. from Domino's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The meteor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't. Stuff stuff. I'm not a fan of Domino's. We're very complicated people. <laughs> we <as> really <laughs> are. <laughs> Although, I don't, be be fair. Every now and then, yeah. I've never yeah. done it. I've yeah. never done it. But yeah. if you know when you're in a situation that where loads of people like, <laughs> it really annoys me when everyone wants pizza. And then they say, right, what flavours you want? We'll just get a mix. We'll just get a mix. And yeah. you're like, well, there's one vegetarian here, which means we're going to have to buy a vegetarian one, but yeah. no one else is going to eat it. So he gets a whole pizza to himself. I ain't happy about that to start <laughs> off with. I always make a point of eating that pizza as well. You know, like, I'm, I'm getting my money's worth out of this. Just staring you know. at the vegetarian <laughs> like, while you're chowing down on it. Um no, the um, but when they order a Hawaiian, I'm always up for a couple of slices of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ham and pineapple. You get those people lot, that yeah, say, a lot of people Whoa. take the piss out of Hawaiian, but yeah, yeah I'm, d- I'm all right with it. You don't put dessert on the pizza. Why not? <laughs> you put every fucking, like, Jesus, I've seen everything on a pizza. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I've got time for Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, oodles. Oh, sorry, go on. Go on. Mushrooms. Go on. <laughs> Just oh, no, mushrooms. Fuck, fuck Just mushrooms. mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> oodles. <laughs> so while well, sticking with the culinary theme, noodle sandwich, yay or nay? Yeah, nay. I mean, nay, yeah, I did sure. I've never tried it and I've got no desire to try it. I've, I've got Does no it... 
No. Does it even work, Matt? I mean, it, like, is it? It's like, fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's just. Is it? It's basically like the che- at a university that was like the cheapest thing that's also <laughs> the most filling. Basically, super noodles on toast with like tuna in that throw up for like a good three or four hours and it costs like fifty p. Oh, that's, 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 that's a posh one, Matt. I mean, just, <laughs> just get just get two bits of bread, bit of margarine, stick some noodles in between. It's fine. Yeah, Matt, you're fucking yeah. toasting <laughs> it, you're getting yeah. tuna and stuff. What's all that about? It's <laughs> like, again, most filling. Yeah. But your noodles, oh, as well. Jesus! Was this during oh, so, your "I want to live like common dreadful. people" phase? James? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Is that a thing? No, James Farley. Oh, right. <laughs> Says I want to be like common people. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm calling you M- posh. MD Cribble. You're right, James. You've got quiet. What's going on? Yeah, I'm fine. I just don't know where you're going with that. No, who's cooking <laughs> noodle sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Go on. MD Kribuff says, did the media clout of the computer game show remove the roadblocks to a recent Xbox One X purchase? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I, have, um, I have considered that. <laughs> now, I was worried that it was just my ego, right? I mean, don't you have more Twitter followers than the TCGS account? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but I've, I don't know. I've got a feeling that had it been what I've referred to as a normal person, um, <laughs> they wouldn't have backtracked on that deal. Um, and again, Normie, that could just be my you're insane a fucking ego. fucking shit muncher. They wouldn't have. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, right? You're just thinking like when you walk in the store, they're thinking, "Oh, here comes the main one." You know, I'm walking next to this. <laughs> this is this is it, right? Okay, this is it. Um, there's no way they wouldn't have looked through my Twitter feed, right? Yeah. There's no because you work in retail and you're getting bollocked and it's there's you know now you're getting emails from head office saying this person's not happy. You would look at the Twitter feed, right? And on those few days, we tweeted a picture of Ian Lee wearing a computer game show T-shirt. <laughs> we announced that we're doing a live show at EGX, um, and there was a couple of other things we were tweeting about about the show that I was kind of thinking, if you didn't know us, that's impressive. Mm. <laughs> I might have just said. I might as well have just tweeted. Hey, remember when we were nominated for a Games Media Britlist Award this year? Guys, <laughs> just <laughs> remember that? Um, so there was part of me thinking that I was going to turn up and they were just going to give me one. <laughs> oh my God, Dave, really? <laughs> yeah, that was why you go going crazy. But, uh, it was David, everyone. Quick, 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 get everyone clean the store. He's coming. He's coming. Just, Here we go, just, sir. I'm just going to say that I'm, we're terribly sorry, Mr. Turner. You know, about, about <laughs> yeah. I, do, I genuinely thought that. But there you go. But yeah, I basically do think it was my tweet uh, to, to 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 the main game account that basically saved. It. I mean, Dave, you literally at mentioned the store. Like <laughs> you mentioned the store, <laughs> who didn't do it? They weren't going to do anything, were they? I thought, I like- thought that was a bit cringe, though, Matt. I'm right, and you're probably right. That did help things along, but I, I did think it was a bit cringe for the reason being that they probably thought that I also tweeted from the TCGS <laughs> account. In the third person. Yeah, probably probably didn't realise it was a team effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's now using his WhatsApp. Did I tell you the did I tell you the other story that there was a fake game helps Twitter feed? Yeah. I yeah, saw yeah, you I tweet saw about it. Yeah. Like, they totally nearly done me. They said, um, oh yeah, sorry to hear this, we're still looking into this. Can you give me your email address? And I was sort of gave them my email address and I thought, hold on. We've already been emailing each other. Why do mm. they need that? Oh my that? god! Really? Okay, yeah. And then they went, "Okay, can you now give me um, your uh, <laughs> the card number? <laughs> the oh my god! CVV number. I mean, it's not subtle, is it? Did you not see this, Matt? No, it I didn't. That's funny. amazing. Like, your it? response was brilliant. Right, okay. <laughs> let me let me let me read you let me read you the, the, the tweet and my response. Um, where was it? It was here. So uh, before we proceed, this is them. For security purposes, can you provide the card number, expiry date, CSC, and card oh, hold name? That is holder unbelievable. Name? So I started writing a reply saying, I'm not really comfortable giving this information across Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. And then I noticed that they were uh, they were called something different. They were called... At game, game Help rather than Game, game Helps help or something. Rather than yeah, Game yeah. Helps, yeah. yeah. So my reply was, sure, card number is suck my dick and billing address is go <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> And then they come back with an absolute, probably the worst comeback I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> comeback. Come said, they said, that relates to stop crying and go to get t- tissue. But okay. Yeah, what does that even what? mean? And then they blocked me. I don't know. <laughs> Wankers. Game yeah. help. 
They're, they're, they're banned now anyway. I've, I've reported oh, they, them nice and all one. that shit, yeah. Cool. Uh, right, last one. Tom Doughty says, James, would you rather play a game of Juiced with David Cage or Jonathan Blow? Um, I mean, this is, this is one, not one hard, of them actually. knows you it's, hate him. Well, no, I, the I, other I, one I, should have got the gist <laughs> by now, but probably hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I still sometimes forget that I got blocked by him. <laughs> Just because I asked him a couple of questions about what he thought of Gears of War. It wasn't a couple of questions. It was, it was, it was a lot of abuse over a c- c- few weeks. It was, it was over quite a period of time, James. <laughs> I just asked him questions about what he thought about guns and stuff. But, um, no, Who would you I, rather I play I'd, Juice with? Def- I'd definitely rather play Juice with um, oh, There's the first bench in Affine. Update the hey! website. Yeah, update <laughs> the website. Uh, d- Never James. shuts off about it, does he? <laughs> no. James, is, is, there a th- is there a third person, like is someone else, so that we can have? I want to have like a four-player, organize a four-player multiplayer game with you and and your three best buddies from the games industry. So, is there a third person you hate as well? I don't know. I don't as well as about Cage, that. Blow, who else? What are your opinions on Molyneux? I, I don't know. I don't. I feel sorry for him a lot of the time. <laughs> To be honest, I, I don't know. I just maybe it could be a two-on-two yeah. match. You, Molyneux versus <laughs> Blow and Cage. I'd definitely rather play it with David Cage, though. I think that'd be much more interesting. Why? I couldn't because because Jonathan Blow would just be critiquing the game, wouldn't he? The whole time <laughs> it's and true. saying it is <laughs> true. He'd, be all, he'd be all like, "Oh, you think this is good, do you?" And all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, "Yeah, I think it's the best racing game ever made." <laughs> now let's watch. Did you see the advert? Series of the advert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, Jonathan, people didn't appreciate it the one the way the developers wanted them to appreciate it. So yeah. ultimately, it's a failed project. Uh, there's a little joke on that, right? Okay, <laughs> we're done. We are done. We Matt. are. It's nothing, nothing to say. All the links to all the show notes are in. Oh, all the links to everything we do in the show notes. That's it. Yeah, just look at the description of your podcast player of choice. Cool, and. Uh, we will catch you next week for another thrilling episode. It's our last one before EGX. Shit. So let's make it good. Crap. Great. Mm. Pull the crowds in. Yeah, um, yeah, we need a banger. Next week. To see all those tickets. James will uh, put out a little teaser trailer of his break dancing. It's on- not happening. I don't know why. <laughs> it's still <laughs> persisting. <laughs> Thanks for I've said nothing. I did what you said. I've said nothing. I've not replied to anything <laughs> at all. And it's still going on. Thanks it's for It's ramping up, actually. If anything, it's ramping up. So We'll catch you next week. Goodbye. Can't dance. Bye. You better learn to dance. <laughs> I'm not going to learn to dance. You better learn, James. It's coming. Just, gonna... just, just, just learn a head spin. <laughs> yeah, just something easy. Start yeah. with. <laughs> Do a cheeky head I'm spin. Not... He's so happy. modest. That's what I love about James. He's so modest. I can't <laughs> dance, guys. And we're like, we all know that you're one of the, the your UK's best break dancer. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. No. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>